The regular Board of County Commissioners meeting of Tuesday, February 21st will now come to order. Um, we'll begin with uh, an invocation by Stan Bowling, our Community Development Director, and uh, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance by Commissioner Bob Solari. But before we do that, I wanted you to take notice that our flag is at half staff. Our flag is at half staff because we've lost a very valuable individual a deputy sheriff, a, a family member, and a friend to all, a tremendous public servant in Indy River County who was tragically lost over the weekend. We lost Gary Kool-Aid Chambliss tragically, and I ask you to keep his family and all of his friends and him in your mind and in your hearts and in your prayers. I ask you for a moment of silence. Father God, we ask that you flood our darkness with your light. We ask that you bring your presence, your Holy Spirit into our community, into our lives. And with your spirit, we ask that you bring your comfort. We ask that you bring your strength and your righteousness to heal, to straighten what needs to be straightened, and to bring forth life that only you can give. And in all seasons, and in this season, we say, blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. 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 Please join me in the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thanks, man. Thank you all. Thank you, Danny. Yeah. Thanks, Joe. <coughs> First item, on, uh, first item on the agenda is the additions, deletions to the agenda. Uh, commissioners, I ask uh, that my item 14A1 uh, be moved just right behind item 5D, which is the last proclamation, and that will become 5E Echo. Anything else? Move agenda as amended. Second. I have a motion by Commissioner Solari, seconded by Commissioner Adams. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Thank you. Uh, we have the, the first uh, proclamation and presentation. Will be a presentation of proclamation designating the week of February 19th through 25th as Through with Chew Week. And that will be presented by Commissioner O'Brien. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Is Leslie here? Leslie Spurlock? Okay, great. Well, come on up to the podium, please. We have a SWAT team. <coughs> yeah, just come on up to the one of the podiums. That'd be fine. <coughs> okay. <laughs> Good morning. Welcome. I'll go ahead and read the uh, proclamation, then you could give us a couple words, okay? Thank you. This is a proclamation designating the week of February 19th through the 25th, 2017 as Through with Chew Week. Whereas the Florida Department of Health Bureau of Tobacco-Free Florida and Quit Doc Foundation are leaders in tobacco prevention and cessation efforts. And whereas using smokeless tobacco can lead to nicotine addiction and dependence. And whereas smokeless tobacco products like Chew and dip can contain more nicotine than cigarettes. And whereas smokeless tobacco users have an 80% higher risk of oral cancer, and whereas youth use of smokeless tobacco has fluctuated but has not decreased compared to a decade ago, and whereas in any of county's rate of youth using smokeless tobacco of 3.2% is higher than the state's smokeless use rate of 2.2% and highest of the youth rates are in rural areas. And whereas 
Once adolescents start using one tobacco product, they are more likely to experiment with others. And whereas tobacco-free Florida's quit your way can double a tobacco user's chances of successfully quitting. Now, therefore, be it proclaimed by the Board of County Commissioners in Indian River County, Florida, that the week of February 19 through 25, 2017, be recognized as Through with Chew Week in Indian River County. Adopted this 21st day of February 2017, signed and endorsed by all five county commissioners. You could introduce yourself and give us a few words, please. Good morning. My name is Marie Wygonic Blanchard, and I am a program specialist for the Department of Health, and I am part of the Tobacco-Free Partnership of Indian River County here. And I want to thank you, County Commissioners, for supporting the Through With Chew <laughs> proclamation and supporting the Tobacco-Free Partnership. Um, tobacco is the only product that, when used as intended, ultimately kills the consumer. So as leaders, you must be vigilant along with us, taking every opportunity to keep the public informed of the harm of all tobacco products. We can't afford to ignore tobacco when the industry spends billions recruiting our youth and our kids. So thank you for supporting this Through With Chew week. Very good. Thank you. Why don't you come on up? or anything or okay <laughs> hang on we gotta get Commissioner Flory in here <clears throat> Marie's acting like this is the first time <laughs> all right well, thank, thank you, you very much yeah. have a great day Next item on the agenda is a proclamation and pres presentation uh, to designating March the 2nd, 2017 as Read Across America Day, and that will be presented by Commissioner Bob Solari. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Our Holly McDougall and Patty Fuchs here, please. Would you come on up? Mr. Zito, you're more than welcome to join them. Thank <laughs> <laughs> Patty Fuchs, our children's librarian, and Holly. Welcome. And this morning I'm very happy to read this proclamation designating March 2nd, 2017 as Read Across America Day. Whereas the citizens of Indian River County stand firmly committed to promoting reading as the catalyst for our students' future academic success, their preparation for America's jobs of the future, and their ability to compete in a global economy. And whereas the Indian River County Library System has provided significant leadership in the area of community involvement in the education of our youth, grounded in the principle that educational investment is key to the community's well-being and long-term quality of life. And whereas, National Education Association's Read Across America is a national celebration of Dr. Seuss's 113th birthday on March 2, 2017, promotes reading and adult involvement in the education of our community students. Now, therefore, be it proclaimed by the Board of County Commissioners in Indian River County, Florida, that the board endorses National Education Association's Read Across America and recommits our community to engage in programs and activities to make Americans' children the best readers in the world. And the board encourages all citizens to assure every child is in a safe place reading together with a caring adult on March 2, 2017. Adopted this 21st day of February 2017 and signed by all five members of the Board of County Commissioners. Good morning, and we'd be happy to hear from you this morning on Reading Across America. Well, thank you so much for your support for Read Across America and for the libraries in general. Um, I think we all realize there's been countless studies done of how important uh, literacy is to children's futures and to their success in school, and that's why 
we offer so many programs at the library, for example, our Very Ready Readers, which is a kindergarten readiness program that we've uh, started uh, along with uh, some partnership with the Kindergarten Readiness Collaborative. Um, and Read Across America is just one day, but it's really every day for us. You know, we want to encourage our families to read together, we want our teenagers to read together, we want our adults to read together. And that's really what the day is about. So all week long we're, we're going to be celebrating Dr. Seuss's birthday, the Cat and Hat will be visiting throughout the week um, at the libraries and particularly on March 2nd we really want to encourage everybody to take the time to sit down with your children, your grandchildren, your friends and read. in. Thank you. <clears throat> Next item on the agenda is a proclamation. Uh, that will be presented by Commissioner Adams, uh, proclaiming um, it's a proclamation for uh, Fran O. Ross. Miss Ross, are you here? Would you like to come down? Would you like to come on down and any of your family you might want to bring with you? Well, I'm moving right along. <coughs> well, <coughs> welcome today. Thank you. It's my pleasure to read the proclamation honoring Fran O. Ross. Whereas Fran O. Ross, the daughter of Mrs. Johnny Clyde Ross and the late J.A. Red Ross, is a native of Gifford, Florida, where she attended Gifford Elementary, Gifford High School, and Vera Beach High School. And whereas Fran O. Ross earned her Associate of Arts degree from Indian River Community College, going on to attend Florida Atlantic University, where she earned her degree and taught school in Indian River County until she pursued her lifelong dream of becoming an attorney by enrolling in and graduating with her Juris Doctor degree from Southern University School of Law in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. And whereas Fran O. Ross, a distinguished member of the Florida Bar and Florida Association of Criminal Defense Attorneys, worked with the Public Defender's Office trying well over 200 cases in her career as a public defender before embarking on a prestigious career as a private criminal defense attorney. And whereas Fran O. Ross is a member of the St. Paul AME Church and is a life member of the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People. And whereas throughout her career, Fran O. Ross has been a pioneer by becoming the first African-American female radio dispatcher for the Indian River County Sheriff's Department and correctional officer for Indian River Correctional Institution, as well as the first African-American female elected to the Indian River Memorial Hospital Board of Trustees and the first African-American female attorney in Indian River County. And whereas Fran O. Ross currently serves as a special master presiding over code enforcement matters for the city of Fort Pierce and the city of Port St. Lucie. And whereas Fran O. Ross is the proud mother of Israel and Noah and the proud grandmother to three wonderful grandchildren. Now therefore be it proclaimed by the Board of County Commissioners of Indian River County, Florida, that this proclamation recognizes the pioneer spirit and civic contributions made to the Treasure Coast by Fran O. Ross. Duly adopted this 21st day of February 2017 and signed by all five county commissioners. Thank you so much for your contributions to the community. Thank I just you. want to know how you have time uh, to I'm do anything. Just to <laughs> yeah, I that's what I was going to say. I got worn out just hearing I'm everything. Very <laughs> fantastic things that you've done, and we're just so proud and lucky to have you as a member of our community. Well, thank, thank you. Thank you, and my thanks go to my beloved Gifford. Uh, to all of my teachers throughout the Indian River County School District and my family. And thank you, Teddy Floyd, everybody that's here, my mentor, Mr. Victor Hart. Thank you so much. Thank you. Would you like a picture? Mm -hmm. he's, he's gonna take one whether you want. 
Yeah. <laughs> it comes with the proclamation. <laughs> thank you, friend. Friend, thank you very thank much you. for everything. Thank you, friend. Appreciate it. Next item on the agenda is a proclamation honoring Victor Hart Sr. G. G is. Is, is the chief in the room? I see a whole lot of heart in the room. If, if, if you want to gather around Dad, we we'll appreciate that. Just a few of the hearts. Good morning, Victor. Yes, how are you doing this morning? Good, good, good. I'm doing fine. Well, come on, man. We all live together. Well, there you go. And you got Teddy on the side. <laughs> what a lineup. Well, it, it's my great privilege and honor to present this proclamation, and we're looking forward to a few good words. So I'll get right, right on with the pr proclamation. Proclamation is honoring Victor Hart Sr. Whereas Victor Hart Sr., known to many as Chief, was born and raised in the Bahamas, immigrating to the United States at the age of 21 under a labor agreement between both governments. And whereas Victor Hart Sr. brought up with a sense of integrity and high morale principle, inherited the innate ability to organize people for action, becoming a visionary and social activist and leader. And whereas Victor Hart Sr. recognizes the social injustices in the Gifford community, and in 1953, in a cl collaboration with other Gifford citizens, organized and founded the Gifford Progressive Civic League, whereas mission addressed the inadequate provision of social services and infrastructure such as roads, water, sewerage, and street lights. Whereas Victor Hart Sr. met with leaders of the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People, the NAACP, in 1953, and subsequently founded the Indy River County branch to further the social justice for the Gifford community and Indy River County. Whereas Victor Hart Sr. became an American citizen in April 1961, starting his nearly 46 years of presidency of the Indian River Branch of the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People, where he earned the organiza organization's highest leadership award, the T.H. Poole Senior Service Award, in June 1996. And whereas Victor Hart Sr. joined the Brotherhood of the Gifford Mas Masonic Lodge number 347 in 1953 and served as the worshipful master of more than 40 years until his retirement in 2007. And whereas Victor Hart Sr. dedicated more than 55 years of his life to the causes to better humanity through the faith and through determination of to ensure the equal justice for all people. And as witnessed in the selflessness of the service on numerous boards in the Gifford, Florida, to Washington, D.C., including service as chairman of the Gifford Health Center, as a member of the board of directors for the Gifford Youth Activity Center, and the Florida Partnership for End of Life Care, as a member of the Juvenile Justice Council, and the Economic Development Council, the Primary Care Public Health Committee, and the Community Development Block Grant Citizen Advisory Task Force. Victor Hart Sr. has 
facilitated the opening of over a dozen facilities across the state of Florida through his service on the board of directors of the Florida Community Health Center, providing low-income and disadvantaged citizens with health care and health services. Victor Hart Sr., a longtime member of the Friendship Missionary Baptist Church, continues to serve his community as deacon. And whereas Victor Hart Sr. is the proud father of 11 children, 37 grandchildren, 20 great-grandchildren, and four great-great-grandchildren, which have been the product of his marriage of nearly 40 years to Valerie's young heart. Now, therefore, be proclaimed by the Board of County Commissioners of any River Flo County, Florida, that the pro this proclamation recognizes the extensive humanitarian and civic contributions made to the community and to the county by Victor Hart Sr. Duly adopted this 21st day of February 2017. Signed by all five county commissioners. Thank you, Victor Hart Sr. I want to say you all know more about me and I know about myself. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, I, I just want to say, even though my son just told me what was going on a little while ago, but I want to say I appreciate what you have done for me. And I've been in this town a long time, but I, I really didn't know nobody was ch keeping check of what I was doing. <laughs> and for that, I want to say thank you. And you know, they tell me I talk too much, so I ain't gonna say nothing. <laughs> hey, well, Chief, we yeah. want to present this too from Senator Mayfield. She also sent it for you, another proclamation. Okay. Honoring you for all the hard work and mentorship for all of us. Thank you. I know I didn't. I just got chastised. I didn't tell Victor last night that he was going to get this. <laughs> nice man. Oh, we got more. Here comes the big one. <clears throat> well, we didn't have a lady before. Slide, slide Victor back this way just a little. Get you right in the middle. Hey, Mike, why don't you come on, or a couple of you guys, yeah, there we go. And we'll, we'll take a, a That's next right. item, right. we'll take another brief recess so you can have more family pictures. Don't go back to work yet. <laughs> Don't let Victor get seated yet. Yeah, no, we, we want to keep you all together. Um, The next item on the agenda was uh, initially going to be later on, but Victor, since you're here, 
uh, I've asked my fellow commissioners if we can move that on up to a closer time. You may want to have a little participation in the next item. Appreciate uh, you. Another item we didn't discuss last night. Thank you. Uh, and, and that would be, um, I'd like the opportunity to uh, discuss the naming of the Gifford Park <coughs> and the recreational complex in the name of Victor Hart Sr. and would like to discuss with our fellow commissioners if we could uh, make uh, that dedication to Victor Hart Sr. Community Enhancement Complex. Yeah. Rename the park that you, park you, you work so hard to get. Strong good. Uh, but uh, see, I, I can't make a motion since I'm the chairman. Mr. Chairman. If I may help you out at this time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it would Commissioner be a, Solari, thank you. It would be a great pleasure on your behalf to make a motion this morning to name the Gifford Park the Victor Hart Senior Community Enhancement Complex. Second. Thank you. Is there any discussion on this item? Y yeah, Mr. Chairman. Oh. I'll just, ju just like to say that as not a, as long a resident of Indian River County as Mr. Hart. Yeah. I have been here for 37 years and some of my family for another almost 20 years before that. And from both what I've heard and what I've personally experienced, uh, Mr. Hart is one of the, the finest members of our community. He is one of those who has helped to build a better Indian River County. I've rarely known such a, a gracious man in my dealings and interactions with him. And I can't think of any member of Indian River County and more specifically the community of Gifford to name what I believe is one of the premier facilities in the area of Gifford, the present Gifford Park after him. I think if any namings have been well deserved, this is certainly at the top of the list. Well, thank you, th thank thank you uh, Commissioner Solari, and uh, I, I, I have to agree, uh, there, there is no finer choice, uh, that's why it's you, Victor. But, you know, he's, he's with his, his sons, or some of his sons, a limited selection of all of his sons, <laughs> and uh, they would probably agree with me that, uh, you know, Victor may, may use a few words once in a while, but you don't want to get him excited <laughs> because he speaks with passion, but more importantly, with civility. And it's probably ridden through this county and traveled the course of uncertainty at a very tumultuous time where others took the pathway of tumultuous activity being the choice. And Victor did not do that. Victor, you are one civil individual, but I think you know how to get things done. And uh, that comes from going door to door in the early years when I wasn't here and most of us weren't around. We were. And you started a process and your family took a tremendous sacrifice for all that you had to do. There were countless days and nights that they were worried about you because you walked the streets throughout the night to ensure that things were done right. And I appreciate that. And I was told by another young man that's, that's with you now, uh, that's uh, Teddy Floyd. Uh, he was my partner in, in the COPE unit. And uh, when, when we first met, I don't know if you recall, but um, we were working on a project. And, and I remember that I was to meet a man named Victor Hart. And Teddy said, we have to pass it by chief. I said, you have Indians in this town. I did not know that you were chief at that point. <laughs> so we stopped by your house and you were sitting on a, a wooden chair in front of your residence. And we got out of the patrol cars and we started to talk. And I figured we were going, you were the, a man of authority in the community, a community leader, that you were going to respond with a lengthy dissertation as to why we should do something or why we should not do something. And I don't know if you remember the conversation, but I remember very clearly, after we said what we said, you just said, hmm. And I looked at Teddy and he said, keep talking. 
And I said, well, and we went further on. And you said, huh. And I said, uh, when is this going to end? Is, is he going to say something? And he said, he likes what you, we want to do. He fully supports it. And he's going to let everybody in the community know that this is going to be for the betterment of, of the people. I said, you got all that? He says, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you met the chief. Okay. And Victor, I want to tell you that over the years, you have been an invaluable voice as well as an ear. But we rather say that we were the ears and you were the voice because you knew what was happening and you knew what had to be done to make it right in the most civil fashion. And to that, I say, thank you. Well, we have a motion on the floor and a second. Is there any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries unanimously that we will be naming the park after you, Victor Hart. Thank you. Number one, I want to say thank you. And the reason I'm saying I thank you because nobody do nothing for Victor. They just tell me what to do. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and 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 I, I want the commissioners to know that Victor has come a long way in this town, in this county. He, he wasn't nice and pretty like it look now but i come here and i dedicate my life to make sure we indian river county be recognized as one of the best county in indian river county thank you very much Victor, your uh, family members have requested to have a digital picture up here, and I'd like to welcome you to come up to the podium, uh, I mean, to the dais, and, and sit in this chair. Yeah? Maybe we'll get out of here early. That's our sixth commissioner right there. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to uh, introduce the uh, temporary chairman of the county commission. <laughs> <laughs> Get all the hearts yeah, in there. Know about that. Okay. All right. You did all this. You ain't told me nothing, man. <laughs> you ain't told me anymore. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Taking a sketch. <laughs> okay. <laughs> now we'll get a picture. Thank you. Thank you. Wilfred Hart. Yes, sir. On behalf of my family and my brothers, them can speak for themselves. Uh, we just want to take time out to tell, you know, my dad is 86 years old and most folks wait till they 
wait until they're put in the ground before they get some type of proclamation or, or some type of stuff established on their behalf. But today I stand representing my family to tell each one of y'all, thank you. Thank you, because you didn't have to do it. Um, Mr. Bob Salar, you've been really good to us. You've done some great things for my daddy uh, recently. Um, Mr. O'Brien, I stood at that podium over there doing the situation, dealing with the uh, uh, pool, and we made a comment, and it was supported five to nothing. Um, Fletcher's his family, you know, he grew up eating my mama food, so we have to treat him <laughs> like a brother unless my dad will beat us. So we don't have any other choice. And Ms. Adams, it's my first time ever seeing and meeting you. I've seen you on television from home, and uh, you, you take a strong stand on every issue. Don't let these guys push you down, because I'm going to have to come <laughs> back and go off on you if you do. And Mr. Zork, we want to tell you thank you very much for also uh, your Christ-like mentality. And as long as you keep this board in Jesus' hand, I strongly believe that this board will continue to do great things. And for our lawyers and our county administrator, we say God bless you, and y'all just keep doing what you're doing, and God will see us through. Thank you. Thank you. Couldn't pass up this opportunity, Freddie Wolf, Please, Freddie. 4590 57th Avenue. My heart is just, just pumping with joy this morning. And for all of you who made this possible for Mr. Bit Your Heart Senior, I tell you, it, it just, just, I'm not, I'm not normally choked for words, I am this, this morning. But I do want to say one thing Beat Your Heart Senior laid a template for many of us to follow. It wasn't our doing. Sometimes you wanted to go left, and he said, no, 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 go right. <laughs> and it looked like every time, not look like, every time he was right on the direction he uh, allowed us to go. I'm a prodigy of Mr. Victor Hart. I'm, I'm one of those children, outside children, I guess you can call. But I'm a part of that family. The Hart family has been a, a dynamic team here in the, in the River County area, especially in Gifford and they continue to do great things. So I thank you all so much for having the foresight to give him his flowers while he can yet smell them. You know, well, so it's very, very important. So I thank you, I thank you, I thank you on behalf of the Gifford residents and in River County residents. Thank you. Freddie, I'm glad you came up to the podium uh, because it was uh, while we did uh, move this forward, we have a little bit of work to do as far as the signage and I appreciate you stepping up to the plate, working with us and our uh, staff, and uh, Teddy as well. Uh, we really appreciate that, and we're, we're going to get it done, and we'll have a very fitting ceremony up the road at the right time when everybody can be together at the park. Fantastic. Thank you, sir. Uh, good morning, commissioners, and I'd like to uh, further what Freddie said. It's an awesome man standing over there quietly uh, as a about a little 12 year old arrogant obnoxious pig-headed strong-willed little boy he just said come here <laughs> and the hearts know about the tree come sit under the tree and for some reason he saw something in me that I didn't see in myself he was a mentor his sons shared him with me I don't know, I guess this was God's will that he take me under his wings. And as a result of Victor Hart Sr., I've watched what he's done, I've watched his accomplishment, I've watched his humility. Victor Hart never asked for anything. He was constantly giving. And as Freddie said, for you to give him this yet while he sees it is an awesome event. I mean, most of the time you stand in front of a church what he, and do all of this stuff, but Victor Hart Community Enhancement Complex, that's minuscule to the things that this man has done for our community, not only our community, ladies and gentlemen, but for our county and our state. Chief is the real deal. And I'm honored, all of you commissioners, Jason, uh, attorney, I'm honored that you gave it to him so he could see it, feel it, and touch it, yet while he still lives. 
Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, Tony Brown. And Tony, you know that he feels the same way. And last night, during your uh, discussion with the community, you know you said the right thing. You know you did the right thing. Because I don't know if you heard it, but I was cl a little closer to him in the audience. And I heard him say, hmm. <laughs> so you know it was right. <laughs> yeah, you heard it too, Freddie. Yep. Thank you. All right. Well, Teddy? Just want to thank you again, commissioners, for everything you're doing. We still have a long wall, a lot of miles to carry and go, but we'll continue to improve in River County. I want to thank our former commissioner, Fran Adams, who was also a part of when we were starting this initiative, and all the commissioners, Gary Will, and all of those guys that have started this legacy, and you guys continue to enhance it. And most of all, I want to thank a minute, just thank our sheriff and our community, and uh, just want to tell you we love you. And God bless y'all for everything. Thank you, Teddy. Mm -hmm. I do not want to belabor uh, the accolades that you have given. Uh, I am the first person that the Gifford uh, Progressive Civic League actually appointed to the advisory board to the Parks and Recreation. I, Valerie Brent Wilson, thank you so highly because it was through their initiative that we were able to actually go ahead and advocate for the Gifford Park. So again, thank you. Thank you so much. Well, there are no minutes uh, to be approved. However, we have uh, informational items. And uh, one thing that comes to mind is a, uh, uh, a press release from the uh, Florida uh, Senate President Office. And uh, I, it pertains to one of our own here on the county commission. And uh, President Negron uh, did announce the appointments to the Florida Constitution Revision Commission. And he did pick nine individuals, most of the names you will not be familiar with, but one that uh, you will be very familiar with is none other than Commissioner Bob Solari. And he will be on the Constitutional Advisory Board. And we're very proud that uh, he will be involved. I just want to read, briefly read what uh, the uh, Senate President wrote. After a successful private sector career in the citrus, real estate, and financial planning, Commissioner Solari turned to serve his community for more than 35 years as a former City of Vero Beach Council member and now Indian River County Commissioner. He has been a strong advocate for the Indian River County taxpayers and a zealous defender of individual rights. Commissioner Solari is a graduate of the University of Denver and Fordham University School of Law. He has also earned a master's degree in business administration from the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill. Well, Commissioner Solari, congratulations. Thank you, And Chairman. serve us well. And uh, next year, when you're looking at the Constitution and all the adjustments, just look towards Bob Solari, because I know that he will have tremendous input in the carving of our future for the state constitution. And Mr. Chairman, I will note that this, while this is me sitting on a committee, the committee does have a sunset. So. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, I don't know if it's congratulations or condolences to both Commissioner Solari and the rest of the committee. So. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, and just, uh, yeah. Commissioner Flay, since this is kind of a unique thing, my advice would be maybe bring something back on the agenda, just requesting authorization for any travel expenses you have to keep uh, <laughs> keep the clerk satisfied that we're we're under a proper audit, so you can travel as you need to. Thank you very much, Mr. Commissioner O'Brien. <laughs> Little sergeant at arms type of. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think I think the clerk would be happy if we did formalize it so that he can travel as he needs to. Because this is a, a normal thing we do. Yes. So, anything further, Council? All right. Well, thank you, and uh, thank you for taking that challenge. 
and accepting it. Congratulations, Bob Solari. Uh, now we'll move on to the consent agenda. And uh, is there anybody uh, on the board that would like to pull anything from the consent agenda? Mr. Uh, Chairman, I'd like to pull item K. Item K Kilo. Anything further from the board? Is there anyone in the audience that wishes to discuss anything further on any of the items? Seeing none. Move to approve as amended. That's a motion by Commissioner O'Brien, seconded by Commissioner Adams. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Aye. Motion carries unanimously. Uh, Commissioner O'Brien, item K Kilo. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. This item is the award of the bid for the Hunter Education Classroom at our uh, shooting range. And I just wanted to highlight this. This is the, the, the final piece of the puzzle for what I consider a, a, a gem in the entire state as far as uh, public facilities. Um, as you all know, we just recently opened up the skeet and the trap and the sporting clays courses, and, and they're taking off being very popular. We, we had the pistol, rifle, and archery range, and now the, uh, the hunter education classroom is going to be that final missing piece to make this just a, a world-class um, and safe facility. I, I, I think that's one of the most important things we can talk about. I would like to comment that uh, the bids came in very tight. I, I think that's good, so I think we're getting a good competitive price, and the, the bid that staff is recommending to award came in very close to the um, uh, architect's estimates. So I think it's a, a good bid, a good package, and will just be a, a highlight for the community to utilize that facility. And with that, move staff recommendation. Second. I, uh, thank you, Commissioner O'Brien. It's a uh, motion by Commissioner O'Brien, seconded by Commissioner Adams. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Thank you. Uh, with that, we have public notice items. Councilor, you do the honors. Thank you very much. Uh, we have a, notice, a public notice of public hearing scheduled for March 7th, 2017. This will be to consider amending section 312.18, which is traffic control devices of chapter 312, rights of way of the Code of Indian River County to modify requirements pertaining to board approval of traffic control devices and the traffic control device ledger. This will be legislative in nature. And again, this will be a public hearing for an ordinance to be held on March 7, 2017. And with that, I turn it back over to the chair. Thank you, Councilor. Uh, just as a, re a reminder, we did have a, uh, a time certain uh, 10 a.m. Uh, executive session regarding the uh, uh, lab labor contract. So we will uh, be gearing up for that uh, very shortly. It's about 10 of. So let's see what else we can get through. Um, we can, do we have, uh, is Mike ready? Perhaps we can get through the 2017-2018 budget workshop hearing schedule. Good morning, commissioners. For the record, Michael Smikowski, Indian River County Budget Office. Uh, before you today, we're uh, proposing to set the uh, budget workshop dates for the FY 2017-2018 uh, budget. Uh, we would propose to distribute budget packets to the board on Friday, July 7th, and that immediately follows, you know, we get final tax, certified taxable value from the property appraiser on or about July 1. Um, so we'll turn those packages around quickly, incorporate the final changes to the values and then get those packets to you. The scheduled budget workshop dates as proposed by staff are Wednesday, July 12th and Thursday, July 13th, 2017. And then uh, we have proposed budget hearing dates, uh, the, the tentative budget and proposed millages on Wednesday, September 13th, 2017. Those are evening as required by Florida statute. Uh, you're required by law that uh, they start after five o'clock. And then the final budget hearing a week later thereafter on uh, Wednesday, September 20th, 2017, also at 5.01 p.m. Now, they are uh, proposed uh, dates uh, and uh, they may be subject to change on the latter two. Is that correct? 
Yes, yes. In Florida statutes, school boards get the first choice of dates. They haven't set their dates yet. Um, when they set theirs, if there is no conflict, we can continue on with this. But some from time to time we've had uh, where they've scheduled where we're planning to and we just move the date because we have the next choice following the school board. Historically not, but I just wanted to advise the public that there, there could be an adjustment in the September. Hearing. Yes, sir. And if that would, uh, we would bring back an agenda item uh, to confirm incorporating, it. confirming that change and, and a new proposed date that would not conflict uh, with the school board. Ms. Staff recommendation. Second. That's a motion by Commissioner O'Brien, seconded by Commissioner Zork. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Thank you. Uh, we might want to go up to the final item before the executive meeting, um, and that would be the public works item. And that's to award a bid of number 2017017, which is the Round Island Riverside Park pavement resurfacing. Good morning, Rich. Good morning, Commissioners. Rich Sperica, Public Works Director. Back in March 2015, the Board of County Commissioners uh, allowed staff, authorized staff to apply for a grant to make improvements to the Round Island uh, Riverside Park. As part of that, in part of those improvements were uh, pothole repairs, complete re resurfacing of the park's parking area, uh, access roads. Additionally, we were uh, drainage improvements. ADA compliance upgrades and restroom uh, to the restroom facilities. The project was estimated at $175,000 by the engineering department. Uh, we had bid openings on January 25th, 2017. There were four bids received and opened. Mansell's tractor service was the lowest bidder at $205,863. Uh, dollars and 65 cents. However, due to recent issues of non-compliance at the intergenerational building, as that Mansell was the site contractor on, uh, the Public Works Department has found that Mansell is not a responsible bidder. While working at the project, Mansell was uh, observed burying debris in the retention ponds. Once we found this out, we immediately stopped them and we told we let the we let them know that they needed to uh, remediate this. Three days later, after we gave them in this information, we again caught them burying on site debris in the green area behind the building. Therefore, staff recommends that Community Asphalt, the second responsible bidder, at $233,504, um, be awarded the project. Funding for the Round Island project uh, is budgeted in the amount of 96000 96, from the Florida Boating Improvement and Round Island Riverside Improvement account, and $137,504 from the Secondary Roads Round Island account. Staff recommends the board approve award to the lowest responsible and responsive bidder, Community Asphalt Corporation, for $233,504.70. Staff further recommends the board authorize the chairman to execute the attached agreement upon review and approval of the agreement and the required construction bond by the county attorney as to form and legal sufficiency and receipt and approval of the required insurance by risk management. New staff recommendation. I'd just like to say I'm, I'm glad that we're showing that sloppy work won't be tolerated and that there are consequences for not following uh, the bid specifications. So. Second. Thank you, Rich. Any further discussion? Is there anybody in the audience who would like to comment regarding this matter? Seeing none, we have a motion by Commissioner O'Brien, seconded by myself. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Thank you once again, Rich. Uh, with that, uh, we do have the executive session coming uh, forward, and uh, this would be a, a proper time in the agenda. To do you want to House Bill uh, 17, or do you want to wait? Do you or could we do the Republic matter under solid waste and get that done? That as well. 
Okay. Yeah, we could we could probably just squeeze that. Yeah, I'm just trying to get us through. Um, all right, let's let's do that. We we have to uh, break from the um, county commission meeting, and we will go to the uh, solid waste district. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're now moving forward for the uh, contract uh, d discussion on the uh, Republic Waste. Mr. Chairman, we've discussed this item a couple of times, and I'd yes. be happy to move staff recommendation. I'd be happy. And second. Is there any further discussion here on the board? Uh, just real quickly, um, one, I want to commend Republic and Vinny and Jace and everybody getting together to, to work on this agreement. Um, I do want to just point out it will save the solid waste district about $276 plus per year and lower uh, cost. So there is a savings um, to, the, uh, to the, the solid waste district. And again, just thank everybody for working together uh, to bring this forward with the, the savings to the district. Thank you, Commissioner Bryan. And I, I will say that uh, as you point out, cost savings, sometimes cost savings is uh, uh, equated to uh, weakened service, and that's certainly not the case that we have with Republic. Uh, I, I think that the, the citizens are being served well, and uh, specifically at, at the convenience centers, I, can, I can't say enough about uh, the the day-to-day -day operations of the convenience centers and could probably elaborate on each individual that's at these centers and we appreciate that so hey, mr chairman i'd like to comment too on the convenience centers because i don't visit them as often as my wife jackie does now but jackie regularly visits the convenience centers and each almost each time she comes back she has something positive to say about the people manning them yes so again that's very appreciative that's the type of customer service we like to see whether it's from a, an employee of Indian River County or somebody representing Indian River County at something like the convenience center. So thanks to all the, the people who work at those convenience centers. Thank you. And uh, do you have anything further, Benny? And uh, uh, I see that uh, Republic is uh, represented here. I see uh, Joanne Staley here. Good morning, Joanne Stanley, Republic Services, Municipal Services Manager. I have a presentation, but if, unless you have questions, we can, I know you have a time certain meeting, so we can kind of move that along, but I'd be more than happy to answer any questions you may have at this time. Anything, any questions? Nope. Well, we want to thank you once again, and the motion is on the floor for approval, and seconded, and uh, any further discussion? Is there any uh, other, anybody from the audience that wishes to discuss this matter any further? Seeing none, as a motion by uh, uh, Commissioner Solari, seconded by myself. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Motion? <clears throat> Opposed? Yes. A motion carries four to one with Commissioner Zork dissenting. Thank you. Thank you so much, and we appreciate another seven years. Thank you. Now with that, we'll return back to the County Commission meeting and then now we will break for the executive session. The executive session will include <coughs> all members of the County Commission, the County Administrator, and our outside counsel, Jeff Mendel. And, and the negotiating team, Assistant County Administrator Michael Zito, uh, Human Resources Director uh, Suzanne Boyle, um, Fire Chief John King, Assistant Chief Brian Burking, and Budget Director Michael Smikowski as well. We'll have a full room. And it is anticipated that this meeting will take uh, approximately one hour. So uh, please uh, adjust your schedules accordingly and we should re return in about that time. Thank you.
And the next item on the agenda is the County Attorney's Matters, which uh, regards the Felsmere Water Control District Interlocal Agreement for Maintaining Unpaved Roads. Councilor? Thank you very much. You know, I'm, I'm not going to take too much time on this issue. I know I've brought this to the board's attention and we've discussed it at several meetings. Uh, the County Attorney's Office has been working with the Felsmere Water Control District uh, since August 1st, 2016 to come up with an agreement for how to deal with uh, governing the drainage and grading of the rights of way within the Felsmere Water Control District area. Uh, the board has conceded many times on many different issues throughout this entire process in trying to come to an amicable solution. However, at the end of the day, uh, we have received sort of again another impasse with the, with the district, this time over the issue of drainage. Uh, the final proposal from the district essentially would have the water from the road <coughs> drain onto the adjacent landowner property and then have a 12 inch pipe installed under the road into the canal to clear out that water. Um, so while the county is willing to fill the potholes, has moved forward with spending $200,000 worth of fill and be willing to grade the road, uh, the drainage district solution is, is essentially flood the pro adjacent property owners and then those property owners will look to the county to then install a pipe uh, under the road. Uh, that or the adjacent property owners will simply sue the county uh, for flooding their property and I don't see in the district's proposal how there's indemnification language that would protect the county in the event we were sued by the adjacent property owners for such flooding. At this point, I cannot recommend to the board um, the proposed district agreement. Um, to those who are here and are upset and have dealt with this since June, um, I can tell you I think this board has gone above and beyond in trying to solve this problem. Um, I've told them that what they're proposing is potentially unconstitutional. They've decided to move forward. I've told them probably the better way to handle this is to charge the, the property owners, and they've decided not to do that to them, and they've decided to move forward. I, I merely recommend to, to the folks here who are about to speak, you know, there is a drainage district meeting that will be held on March 9th. Uh, it'll be it's located at 109 North Willow Street in Felsmere. Um, I, I just recommend that maybe you can bring up your concerns and your issues with, with the district board of supervisors. I do recommend that the district's website indicates that they need to be identified at least nine working days ahead of the meeting if there's going to be an issue on their agenda. So I'd recommend if you do wish to speak at the drainage district meeting um, that you give them ample opportunity ahead of time that you would like to be on their agenda. I, I look for direction from the board. I know uh, the director of the district is here. I know there are residents here and I merely turn it back over to the chair. Well put, Councillor. And again, to just to uh, ensure that uh, you know the intentions of, of this commission, uh, we, we had left, uh, with the exception of uh, Ms. Adams, uh, Mr. Davis was, was seated at that meeting, uh, the one in Felsmere, the evening meeting in Felsmere. And uh, of course, that was uh, just prior to the election. Uh, but what we did do is we did discuss, and I hope you understand that our intentions is to get the roads graded as requested. And, and I know that I left that meeting feeling that we were going to be able to get the roads graded because there was a willingness to, from the district to be able to be accommodating and that we felt, I, I, I know that uh, we felt very comfortable that this was going to get done within short order and did not anticipate all of the constraints and the legal argument that has ensued which will create more liability for the landowners and for the county than we had ever anticipated. And again, uh, the, uh, the conversation has changed and I want to thank uh, Council for um, trying to work through that to get us closer than Father. And he truly did uh, work with this with, the, with their Council. And uh, unfortunately, the, the results have not been very embracing. Um, but I just wanted you to know that we left that evening meeting in Felsmere feeling that we were going to be able to do this. 
is there uh, anybody from the board that would like to speak before we invite uh, the public? I'll just reinforce what you said, Mr. Chairman. I mean, that the meeting that we had up in Felsmere, we discussed a lot of items, <clears throat> and I thought both sides had basically agreed on a certain number of things, just as you said, and that's what I went home thinking. And then I thought our, our attorney drafted up something which very, very closely reflected what happened at that meeting. Yes. And then when we got the first contract back from the attorney from the Felsmore Water Control District, he had, had the, the document had been totally renegotiated in, in favor of Felsmere, which I found to be fairly problematic. And then I met with a, a director of, of the Felsmere Water Control District, and we had a, I thought was a good frank discussion, but the direction I thought we were headed in after that meeting, again after their attorney got hold of it, completely shifted. And I'll go back to what I said at the last meeting in this chambers, is that I think that there's a significant disconnect between what some large landowners in the Felsmere Water Control District want and see as their future in the district, and what the actual needs and desires of citizens living in the Felsmere Water Control District actually are today. And until that disconnect can be mended or reconnected, I think that the Fel Felsman Water Control District is going to have a significant problem. But for them to put the burden on of their problems on us, I don't think is the, the right path to take. It's, it's very disconcerting when, when you know that you have a water and drainage control district, and notice the, the words I used, and we're, we're being imparted with the burden of ensuring the, the drainage, and we're in. We're also uh, sh there's no shared cost here. It, it's all imposed upon the county, and then the liability of the water that may be imparted onto your property, the the citizens' property, we will then be also be held accountable for that as well. <coughs> if not by the district, we most certainly will be held accountable by you, the landowner. So uh, no good deed uh, or overwhelming good deed will go unpunished, and another clear example. With that, let's uh, op open this up for discussion, and I'd like to see if there's anybody who would like to come uh, to the podium and uh, discuss this uh, in any, any uh, length to add some light to uh, this discussion before we begin to deliberate, move forward in any action we're going to be taking. I think Mr. Tillman from the Felsmere Water Control District would like to say a few words. I do have your Certainly. I just did it to myself. <laughs> I did. Good morning, commissioners. Good morning, Mr. Staff. Tillman. Um, I'm here today. Um, I apologize because our attorney couldn't be here or our president of our board couldn't be here. Uh, Mr. Tillman. Could, could you state your name? Oh, I'm sorry. For the record, okay. for the clerk, just the benefit of the clerk. She wants to know, okay. I'm Rodney Tillman. I'm superintendent of plant and operations, Felsmere Water Control District 109 North Willow Street, and my home address is 8456 75th Court. I apologize to you. Thank you, sir. Okay, I would like to be kind of short and brief this morning. The direction I've been given by my board is that they feel the 75, 79 agreements aren't broken why fix them they have sent me to say let's do business as we did in the past the county will maintain the roads like they did under the 75 agreement until such time as legislation to extend or not extend the life of this this district is resolved which way that will go we didn't do so well the last time we were before the Legislature, we got vetoed, so we don't know which way this legislation will go. But the um, feelings are that if the county can operate as is with this 7579 agreement going into the future until this other issues are resolved, that's the path they choose to take. Um, as far as the other issues of the drainage, You've been doing the roads out there for probably 70 years with the same pattern. The water runs off the road to the adjacent landowners under the road and back. So that's the only thing I can say about that. I'm not an engineer. We have an engineer on staff, but 
that's the way it's been done uh, for years. So we won't be, you wouldn't be changing anything if you pick up, I believe there's eight or nine new roads. If you pick those up, you're not gonna be changing anything. You're gonna be grading the same way as you had done in the past. As the landowners buy the land, they put pipes to drain their property, which in turn drains the road. I'll be glad to take any questions. I have one question. Um, when, you, when you were talking about going forward, I wasn't sure if you were talking about going forward to renew the Felsmer Water Control District or going forward to try to become an improvement district. Right now, we're just looking at the one issue of trying to get ourselves renewed. At some point in time, there may be that issue that they may become brave enough to go back to try to become an improvement district. I don't know. Okay, so you've totally taken the idea of becoming a, a, an improvement district out of our discussions then. It, I would only like to do that at this time, you know, until we can get through hmm. getting going into the future because, Mr. Slory, I don't know. I don't have the magic wand to know what the, the people in Tallahassee would do. I know right now they would veto us. And I, I just have to bring up the question. I mean, given there's a disagreement between your attorney and us sort of about what the, uh, are the, the allowable functions of the water control district, especially the idea of actually grading roads. Right. And you know, given how restrictive you see the water control district, and given there's a water control district that uh, has been moving away or moving, is moving away from uh, an urban water control district, excuse me, a, a, a rural urban control district, m more worried about farming towards a more urban one where people are settling in there. I just have to wonder if there's an actual need for the water control district as it's set up today, and if maybe this wouldn't be a good time to terminate the existence of the water control district and turn those functions over to the county or the city and the county, depending upon where the geographical line is. I'm not in a position in my pay grade to answer that. I would uh, like to. I would say suggest then you take it back to the board. Oh, I will do that. Uh, because, yes. I, again, it's, it seems yes. problematic as, as to why we need this extra layer of government somewhere, which doesn't seem to be really performing all the functions that at least some of us believe it ought to be functioning at this time. Well, uh, some of our history might help you with that. We were formed in 1911 under a circuit court decree. We don't have the powers given a lot of the new 298s today. We could be included in that, but we have to go before the legislator to get what's known as a special act. For us to do anything such as maintain roads, it would be just like change into a community development district. There's certain things we've got to do to, since we're an old district under a circuit court decree. We're for, not done. For, um, for the conversations today dealing with this grading of the road, all you guys are currently seeking legislatively is to renew your current existence, not switch to an improvement district. Yes. You have not decided what you're going to do about that in the future. No, because of the large investment we put into that last time failed. So they're not, they're only talking about now trying to help the citizens get their roads graded. So the board has sent me to make an offer to you that I have made. And I have a question about that. If, sure. Um, how does the county and the water control district deal with the drainage on the roads that the county is exist is currently maintaining that are within y'all's jurisdiction yes probably should give you some more history okay <laughs> the um the roads that are in Fellsmere, 90 percent of the roads are on private property to some degree maybe one foot of them might be on drainage district and the other 10 or 20 foot on private property maybe half the road is Maybe like where Mrs. Ledford lived, did she leave us? Yes, yeah, she does. Where she lives, her whole road is, is the citizens out there themselves maintain it. They bought their own shell, they graded it, they, you know. Um, so the way the roads are and the way they're shaped, the, the water doesn't, I'm not quite seeing the problem. I mean, it's, it's existed for almost 70 years working the way it's worked. The only thing we ask is you don't take it, what we call a cut of wheat and through the berm 
because tomorrow morning <clears> if you do that or put a pipe there, the grader's going to bury it or the berm is going to blow out and go in the ditch and then the people can't get to their home. Rich, what oh. is... Um, Don't go too far, Rodney. No. <laughs> is that something that we can, is that what Rodney is talking about, what's being currently done to the other roads? Is that something that can be done to these roads? Currently, the roads that we grade, basically, you know, we've been grading them for years. Right now, some of the roads flood when it rains. Some of the roads do shed onto private property. Uh, we try to cut weep holes in the berms. We've seen uh, to drain the roads when we can. But for the most part, a majority of the roads out there right now have berms on both sides and the water stays in the middle of the road. Uh, some of the roads have ditches on both sides. One will be a water control district ditch. The other will be a swale that we can get the water to. Uh, right now, we do feel complaints with when it rains, the roads go underwater, and it's the same situation that we're going to encounter with this other 9.6 miles of roads that we're talking about now. So what Rodney's saying is accurate. It's basically, we just grade the roads, they're there, and that's what we've been doing for years. Uh, moving forward, we're trying to avoid the complaints and the problems that we've had in the past with the roads that we're grading now as we move forward into the future. Okay. I'd, I'd like to add, you know, 1975, when that agreement started, I'm assuming there weren't so many houses out there. Um, I was only one then I was here, but I don't, I don't remember how many houses, but I, I assume, you know, and as people have built in, maybe they went in and put a pipe in and all that stuff. I think it's a little bit different since it's built up out there. Now you've got people that have been living in houses and you're going to have um, more drainage issues going on to somebody's property where they've already been. Sure. Um, and I think if Scott's, we've got some, some slides here where we can pull up. We, we have had some issues out there in the past. Um, and, and before I start, I just want to say, when, when we started down this road and we were talking back in June, the Water Control District said they can't do road maintenance. So that's why the county's got to do it. We've been asking them to meet us halfway. We're willing to grade the roads. We anticipate some drainage problems. They're a drainage district. I don't know why they can't do the drainage. You know, we, we do the roads. They, they take care of the drainage. We, we haven't been able to get there. But if you, if you advance those slides, Scott. So there's 109th. So you've got the low spots there with the water sitting in it. Um, I think next is it with a big rain. Oh, no, that's, that's after some repairs were done. We went out there and did some repairs on, on an emergency basis. That's what it looked like after a big rain. That's not a grading problem. That's a drainage problem. Um, and there are some roads, uh, if you go to 99th Street, Scott, w when we go to the roads that we have been draining, oh, there's a, there's a, where the, where the roads failed. The reason the roads failed is because the water's looking for somewhere to go. It's stuck on the road. It doesn't have anywhere to go. I'm not an engineer, but a little bit of common sense tells me that's a, that's a water problem, not a road grading problem. Um, and there, there it is from the side. Um, but if you look at, uh, I think maybe the next slide is 99th Street. So this is a road that was one of the roads we've been grading. We're no longer grading it because if you look up along the line there, the private property owner, the road went a little bit onto their property. Um, they had it surveyed, put a berm up, and those stakes there. So we're no longer able to grade that road because it's not wide enough to get a grader down there safely. But there's other issues with that road. That's a neighbor dispute. That's a neighbor dispute. But if you get down to it, the heart of the matter, he put that berm up because the, the, the water was draining off the road and going into his fish ponds. And so to say we don't have drainage issues out there, uh, in some places it, it's working, um, but in, in, and in most places it, it might work. But I'm, I'm, just, I'm just worried that, that we'll, we'll set ourselves up for failure. And, and I think the reason the county was going to do the grading was because the water control district didn't have that authority. We're just asking to meet halfway and help us with the drainage. And I don't know how you can say that they don't have, how, how they can say that they don't have authority to do something on drainage to help us out. We're, we're just looking to be met halfway. We've, we've committed $200,000 in material to go out there and build up the base and, and get those roads working so we can, so we can get them graded. But that doesn't address the, uh, the, the drainage issue, which we think um, would be substantial over a million dollars without right of way. 
um, and then a significant amount of right away. So, so that's that's staff's concern there. How did you get to the million dollar? Well, I mean, what is y'all's proposed way of dealing with the drainage? Perhaps I'm not understanding that. The million dollars came from an estimate that Public Works put together with regards to, I think it was October's response from the Felsmere Water Control District. Basically, the Felsmere Water Control District told us we were responsible for the drainage. We were responsible for a treatment system. We would need to permit it through St. John's. Well, the only way to do this is to put in a series of grass swales to hold the water just long enough and then allow it to discharge into the Felsmere Water Control District ditches. So based on that simple assumption, we just took the miles of road that we had, a basic cost that we had on file, and it came close to a million dollars to be able to do this. So that's where the million dollars came from. It was a, a requirement of the Felsmere Water Control District back in, I think it was October, uh, and we were looking at cost feasibility of what it was going to be to do this and that's the number we came up with here's here's my concern i think all of you guys have in front of you a stack of emails from residents that weren't able to be here today we have some residents in the audience i feel like we're in a vicious cycle of finger pointing and we're not getting the situation resolved and i have people in the felsmer area that are now on notice from the postal depart from the post office that the post office isn't going to continue to deliver the mail down their roads because they can't go down there. We have situations where waste management recycling trucks have had to be pulled out because they've gotten stuck. And we're continuing to send those trucks down there, which is further tearing up the road. And we're sitting up here trying to figure out drainage issues. And I get that. And I get that that there doesn't seem to be any solution, but I also understand that if we don't do anything at all, it's just going to get worse and worse. And, and we have to do something. And I'm getting, I'm to the point of frustration, and I don't want to go back to Felsmere today and tell people that there's nothing we can do because that's not the answer. And that's, that's not what we are here for. This is a basic health, safety, and welfare issue where people can't get to their houses. And we can continue to point fingers of whose responsibility it is for what, but I don't think that's what we are all elected to do, and I don't think that's why we're here. So I really want to get to a point in the conversation where we're coming up with some viable solutions and getting the problem solved. It's been too long, and I don't think any of us want to continue another year dealing with this because we're either going to have to deal with the issues of the drainage or we're going to have to continue to field phone calls about pulling out waste management trucks rich doesn't want to deal with either of those i don't think and i don't either and beyond that it's just it's getting it's ridiculous i don't know what else to say i'm just frustrated no no and, and we, we do share your frustration again we left that meeting thinking we were going forward I, I think all, all that attended did, did have that feeling, and we've heard that before. Uh, you know, the frustrating part is that now we have a choice. Either enter into the drainage business and supersede the water drainage district and do what we understand them being obligated to do, and then grade the roads. I understand you we're looking for a solution today. But, you know, I uh, just want to get back to Rodney. Uh, Rodney, you're, you're, you're a perfect gentleman. And over the years, when, when called upon, you did respond. And uh, we, we have a good relationship. I don't want this to, to be representative of, well, you're here, so you're going to get beat up. You know, that's, that's not it at all. It's not, it's not personal. However, you said something about this is a 99, uh, you're in year 99 and you're looking for recertification. And you have a board that uh, has been established uh, and hopefully changed. You weren't around 99 years ago either, I know. It might feel that way, but you weren't. But the case may be is this district was established when horse and wagon was the primary transportation mode. And citrus was the primary industry in the area, is that sure correct? Excuse me? Sugar cane. And sugar cane. That was the 
<laughs> yeah. It was it. So, Citrus came later. So, so we had agriculture and horse and wagon. So I could understand a district being dedicated to the cause at the time. But some 99 years later, we've had to adjust. And you may have expressed your adjustment at our Felsmere meeting, but the board did not express because they're constrained because they don't have the funding, they don't have the capacity, they don't have the ability. I actually find great interest in what was discussed earlier about let's take a look at this 99-year contract and, and authorization because if we have a water control district and drainage district that, I say drainage, right? I'm sorry, uh, that is standing in the way well, maybe maybe we don't need to have that. Maybe we need to take take it all on in our own uh, our own capacity. It might be a little costly to do, but we'll know the job is going to get done, and we really don't have anybody to argue with, and and wait and delay. These good people have been delayed months. They are swimming to their houses. They're in fear to be able to have to go out to the store. It's you know, absolutely absurd. You're preaching to the choir because I get their phone calls first. Sure, they do. They all told me, yeah, they have yeah. you on speed dial. Uh, yeah. But what can you do for them? What, what have you well, been I able would, to do if, for them? If, if you could go back to your, your slides, slide number one, 109th, the washout. The washout that you saw right there where it blew out the road, the county didn't repair that. I didn't have any means to repair it because all I have in it for equipment is a rubber tire backup. So that washout that you saw there was repaired by one of the local landowners who lives down the street of Mr. Platt. Roy Platt's son repaired that for me. It was an emergency situation. People couldn't get in. I even believe a patrol car hung up trying to go yeah. in and had to use the Sheriff's Department truck. The other slide there where you show the road with the fish farm, 99th. The berm that you're seeing on the south side with the red flags, Indian River County put that berm up much to the disgust of the drainage district. The water had been flowing off the road by the gentleman's driveway and in out into our canal system. We came by one day and suddenly there's a berm there. And now residents can't get up and down the street at all on that one. I'm not trying to make little of, of, a, of a big problem. I'm just saying to you, that problem, we did, the drainage district didn't cause. As far as drainage, there's two types. There's our main canal system and there's secondary drainage. All the property owners are secondary drainage. They're what comes off of their property and culvert piping. Just as the county doesn't supply driveway culverts for people to enter their homes, right. we don't supply the pipe to go under the road. We couldn't be in business if we did we wouldn't have the funds. And you, and you gentlemen can certainly understand that, that if we went into that business of replacing all this, there's no money in the budget now, and we're a year away from a new budget. If I could help you, I would, but there's no money for that because we don't do that. We've never done it. None of the cities do anything like that. All secondary is at the expense of the land or the city or the county. But quite frankly, you, you will probably not have a budget to do what needs to be done in, in any accord if we did wait for that budget, correct? <coughs> I'm not sure I understand or, or the that drainage. question. You, you, you won't have the money. If, you, if, you, if your board chose to, to do the drainage and we did our job, then you still wouldn't have the funding to, to do all that drainage, would you? And certainly not a million dollars worth. That's the point what I'm saying but we're regulated by your direction and it's it's only compounding the matter and delaying it like I said if if if, if I did hear a mo I, I can't make a motion but if I heard a motion about revisiting that 99 year agreement I, I'd be the quickest second in the room and the, I just the, I, you know it's not you it's it's very frustrating it, it's to the point of of, yeah. of anger that we just can't get it done. Well, we're far better than this, Rodney. Yeah, I think that there, 
they understand your frustration. They sent the messenger. I am the messenger, and you can't shoot the messenger, and you can't eat him. Um, <laughs> it's like already he's, said he's, that. He's a bitter old bird. But um, I'm going to leave it now. I mean, I think that I probably said all I can say to you. I would like for these residents to tell you how the system works and that it's been there or, or negative to that. They're going to tell you one or the other. They're going to tell you what you want to hear, or they're going to tell you what you don't want to hear. No, but Rodney, again, I just want you to know that out when we had the Felsmere meeting, you expressed a lot of things during that meeting that we took to the bank. Yeah. And then that was all refuted and changed. And I, I don't believe I would have ever said anything about providing drainage. I, I, I think there was a, a willingness about right of way and drainage, and we can work through that. We can get it done and then enter the, the council. The, the attorney and then a little bit had changed and then we had a negotiation here and then it changed again yeah. and then our council and your council have been working together and uh, th they have not come up with a solution so we're back to square one we might as well just get into the Felsman yeah. meeting which I thought was going to be the best opportunity, and that's yeah. why I suggested to go out to Felsmere to be within the community so we can have everybody attend and you would be able to give us some answers. Well, I speaking, did not know that we were going to get, have unintended consequences here to this value. Yeah. I guess maybe staff to staff would have probably been the way to handle this. Um, I don't know. Once you involve others it it gets maybe out of hand um i can only say that we coexisted together for probably 70 years the board is saying we're there for you you know we're going to give you the two foot of right of way that you want and the other people are going to give you the 20 foot uh, or whatever they're giving you. Maybe the, your agreement should be not with us. You should just say, okay, Felsman Water Control, you have some right of way that's involved in this road. Maybe the agreement should be with the people. Maybe not with us. You know, because they own the roads. We don't own those roads. You said something I just want to clarify. Did, did we build that burn? Yes. Jason? Is, Street. is that berm ours? I, I, I think we did reestablish the berm after some complaints of us flooding the fish farm. Um, I think there's a bit of a wind row there. Maybe Rich, Rich might be able to there's address bamboo. the specifics better. I just want to clarify that point. So. Excuse me. Okay, I'm sorry. The berm on 99th was there years ago as we graded, tried to grade the road on 99th. Uh, the berm disappeared little by little uh, when Kenny Godfrey came in with his um, mm -hmm. with his pit there was issues on the west side of 99th at Babcock Street but for the most part we continued to grade 99th where you see the state the four befores and the flags um, in I'm gonna say April of uh, last year the property owner called and complained that the county was draining water onto his property and we were, we were impacting his fish farm. And he demanded that the berm be reinstalled to keep the water on the roadway. Uh, after having survey go out there and find that we were grading private property and that there was a berm there, we then took it upon ourselves to reestablish the berm because we did grade the berm out of there over the over the years that we were grading the roadway so yes we reestablished the berm that was there back in i believe it was april of this year thank you well i see there's a number of residents in the room uh would anybody like to uh, come forward and speak uh, regarding this uh dilemma thank you thank you rodney you're not you're not leaving are you rodney Did you need yeah there might be something else Thank you. My name is John Pulver, P U L V E R. I live on 93rd Street. I don't live in Felsmer. I live in Felsmer Farms, as I've been told. I've lived there about a year, two years. When I bought my home two years ago, it was sort of in this season, the road was okay. 
relatively. I never even thought about it. Um, over the period of the last two years, I've, I've never seen anything like this. Uh, I'm very distressed by this. Two weeks, or about three weeks ago, I had to go to the hospital, call the ambulance to the emergency room. The ambulance got out there, but I'll tell you, it was one heck of a ride getting back into the emergency room in the back of an ambulance. I have a family with small children, middle-sized children, a lot of people, there's about a dozen homes up and down our road. The county sold this property to individuals. I think the county owes me a road. I'm paying taxes. I think I could sue the county. I don't know, I'm not a lawyer. But there, you have to, I don't even care about the water drainage, just grade the thing. I understand the water is a problem from time to time. It's a terrible problem, but just to get the bumps out of it would certainly help a lot. Uh, at times, it's almost impa impassable. And I looked at some of these other roads that are, are worse than mine, I guess. But it, see, I was never dreamed when I bought this house, and I loved the place, that there wasn't a road to it. You sold me property without a road to it. I can't believe that I kind of I'm distressed with the county. The county didn't sell any property to anybody. Oh, no, not there. the county didn't, but I mean I bought property that the county had put up for sale. Eventually. Yeah. No. 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 We never you know owned what? It. We well, never who owned, owned the property, property at a time? Still Bellsmere don't. Joint Venture. Pardon me? Bellsmere Joint Venture. No. No. Well I, I mean I don't really understand. I don't know. I'm not I'm just making this up sort of as I go go along, but it seemed to me that plots were arranged out there that were sold to individuals, and they didn't, within the county, and the county didn't provide any way to get to them. I mean, isn't that correct? I mean, where did that, there were plots, there's plots up and down this road, they're for sale now, and by individuals, of course, but originally it was put up for sale it was county property, I assume. No. 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 I don't, well, whatever. But anyway, I, there's this, this definite problem, and you have to solve this. Just grade the roads, if nothing else. Forget the water situation. I don't care if you put the water on my property. I'll dra I have a pipe that goes underneath the road. What? Sorry, you may be very uh, unique regarding that matter. From the hip practicality, it does make great, perfect sense be, uh, to just to grade the road, yeah. to make it smooth so you can have access. But the water issue is I understand that. tremendous. I understand. In addition, there are other neighbors that will not see I understand that. through your understanding that the water is just there. I, under, I, under, I understand the problem, believe me, I do. But it seems to me you have an obligation to solve this some way or the other. Whether you take over the water district, whatever, and do something. I don't know. It doesn't seem to be you're accomplishing anything. Sorry. I think, well, I think it's unconscionable to, to think that uh, some of your neighbors actually have to, I know they're not grading to the level in which we would be grading, but they're, they're, they have uh, box blades and they're working, trying to make it a better place so they can have access, and uh, they, they're still having the same water issues. Rodney, you, you want to shed light on that as far as the ownership? I didn't hear where he, I didn't hear his address. I was, wasn't paying attention. Street. 93rd, 93rd Street. 93rd. 93rd. West of Park Lateral? Pardon me? Are you west of Park Lateral? The Big Canal? He's in what's known as the Circle Z properties. Um, but let me clarify something here for you, um, for the public too, not just for you, but for the public. The area in Felsmere is known as the Felsmere Farms Subdivision. It was done by the Felsmere Farms Company, not related whatsoever to the Felsmere Joint Venture 
who came in after the sugar cane days. That property back in those days was South Puerto Rican sugar, Oklahoma sugar, and Gulf and Western Industries, and now it's a joint venture property. None of that property has ever been sold to the public. The public is buying from the old Felsmere Farms Land Sales Company subdivision. That's the tracts of land that they're buying. Thank you for clar the clarification, <coughs> Rodney. Is there any, any Mr. anybody? Chair, I've got a question for Rich and what Rodney said earlier. So Rich, some of the roads that we have been grading basically have a berm on either side and when it rains, the water just sits on the road, right? Some of them, yes. All right, so Rodney said his board instructed him to tell us that there's nothing wrong with the 75, 79 agreements. They're not broken. Why not just do it under those conditions? Is that correct? Yeah, that's what I think that's what Rodney said. Yep, that's what we so got. if we just grade those roads the same way like we've been doing the others for 35 years now, with berms on either side, and then if there's rain puddled on it, that's a drainage problem for the district to take care of. We're just going to grade them. Can we do that? Sure. I mean, we can do, we'll end up with, we can do that. It'll end up like 109th occasionally, but it, you know, it doesn't rain every day around here. I, I think. And some of it, that. some of it will just break through the berm on the lower side, um, on the low side of the road and run onto the property. But, you know, again, when we grade, we'll try to pull some of that dirt back up into the road, uh, but we'll never get it all. So. I, yeah, and I just want everybody to know, if we grade the road, and the request has been for once a month, if we grade the road, two days later it rains, there's nowhere for the water to go, the road's gonna be a mess two days later. So we get complaints, I mean, I think it's the number one reason for phone calls for the county, is, is complaints about graded roads. So I, I just want everyone to know that we're setting up road and bridge to get a bunch of complaints that we're doing a terrible job maintaining the roads. Uh, well, I, I, my point is, we're going to grade them. And if there's a drainage complaint, they need to go to Rodney. Mm -hmm. But he, he said he doesn't have the means. Well, you know what? It's not our challenge. Right. Yeah, they, they got to be in charge of drainage, okay, right. at some point. Uh, and I'm trying to get to where Commissioner Adams wants to go it, is to get to some solution. I think it would be our, we, we can take over grading. But drainage has to be a responsibility of the drainage district. And, and even in the agreement says here, the district will be responsible for providing adequate drainage necessary for the county to continue future grading. They're in charge of drainage. I'd also like to add though, Ms. Tillman keeps on going back to the 75 agreement, but I had thought that the 75 agreement said that the Felsmer Water Control District was supposed to supply dirt that there was a supply of dirt there and that was being used to constantly renovate the roads and that one of the problems recently is the fact that supposedly the supply of dirt has been depleted and they don't have the funds to replace it with anything. So I mean, I'm just wanna, I just wanna bring that up that the, the, what I hear Mr. Tillman saying is that as far as the 75 agreement goes, county, you just do everything you agreed to in the 75 agreement and we'll do everything we can, not which we said we would do in the agreement. And those are two very different things. And if I could just address that, the supply of dirt that is included in the 75 agreement is the dirt from cleaning out the ditches to maintain them for drainage. That dirt historically was dumped on park lateral. Um, I don't know the, the number, everybody out there calls it park lateral, on the ditch bank and then the county or the water control district would go and utilize that to fill in potholes and whatnot. Over the years, it's just, it, there's, it's not there anymore. So that's the history of that. I understand what you're saying and I, and I understand that there's a cost associated with that, but we've already agreed to absorb that. Well, no, we haven't because Mr. Tillman wants to go back to the 75 agreement and we've never had that conversation about going to that agreement. We said earlier that we'd pay a certain amount, but that was conditioned on a different set of promises from the water control district. Again, going back to the June meeting, we both agreed to do 
that we'd go forward doing different things. And that's what, going back to what the chairman said, we left that meeting believing. And then all those things which we thought we were getting from the water control district kept on being taken out of each subsequent agreement. And that's the problem. So while I'm happy for us to go forward with grading, I don't think it's proper for it to be the new one-sided agreement which is being proposed. And, and at the time, Rodney did say that he had no, no more material left. And just about 10 years ago, there was a tremendous hill on the other side of Park Lateral. Now there is none. It's just fully depleted. So we can't rely upon that. How much material is needed? Right now, you just have a rough to, estimate, Rich. I, well, right now I can tell you it's about two hundred twelve thousand dollars worth just to get the roads that we're proposing to grade um, up to a point where we can grade them on a regular basis. We've come up with we come up an estimate off the top of my head. I don't remember how many cubic yards we're going to have to truck in to be able to do this. Um, what I will tell you, it's been over ten years since the district has been able to give us any material. Um, so it just bear that in mind that the county has been dumping material at our cost on the roads that we do grade now uh, in order to you know fill holes like you saw on 109th uh, we do get those throughout the roadways we grade now well then then the question would be for rodney rodney said he's looking at a new budget coming up um if if he would know if he had any access to material or would have that type of funding that you're recommend you're suggesting now rodney and mr because chairman, then this way we can get the grading mr chairman as he's coming up i and i don't know if it was mr o'hare or or rodney or somebody had mentioned that they they were out of dirt but they do have considerable reserve funds that they're choosing not to use to purchase dirt and i and i'm the number two hundred and ninety thousand sticks in my head and i don't know if that's Right, and that came from the sale of some surplus lands the district had that put money in the bank. And I don't know if you know what those numbers were, but it was a, a, a sizable six figure number that was surplus that somebody had mentioned at one of the prior meetings. And, and Rodney, you would be committing today. I, I understand you have to go back to the board, and we, we but I, I would like to know if you're going to have the resources in the not too distant future so that if we did decide today to just move forward and get the job done, that you would have the material to be able to uh, bolster up the berm. Um, what Mr. Zork is speaking of is funds that were, when we sold Farm 13 Stick Marsh rights of ways, mm -hmm. and we sold the 10,000 acres that is now gonna be Felsmere Water Man Management Acre right of ways, there was a fund that fund has been offsetting the taxpayers fees in Felsmere for the last few years and that fund is slowly dwindling down in three years it will be gone so there's a three-year life on that and it will be gone and at that time we're going to have to raise the taxes cease to exist or whatever but I would like to ask the audience a question the ones of you that are out there if we buy these pipes and we buy this spoil, we're going to be charging you for it. We're going to up your taxes to do this. So is that something you all want, the board? It's something we have to, uh, hold on. Wait, wait, wait. Just, sir, we can't, just, hear, sir, we can't sir, hear from just, the audience. You'll need record. to come to the yeah. microphone so that it can be duly actually, recorded. Actually, that question is actually more appropriate for their meeting, which the yes. attorney already said they're going to have. And you, they should, they should ask that question yeah. at that meeting. You invited, I withdraw it. And you're also inviting the folks to go to your meeting as well? Yes. But, okay, so then we'll be able to but, have that discussion at your meeting. Yeah, I, as far as, as um, to answer your question about in the future, I can't answer that at this meeting. Okay. I would like to be able to. I'm not, I'm not dodging a bullet. I want to help these people as much as you want to help them. There are a lot of friends out there. I don't live in Felsmere, but I have a lot of friends out there who pay a lot of assessments who are getting very little for it. And I will really and truly want to help them. I don't want to be the one to up my 
assessment to them when they're already paying the assessments they're paying. And that's, I, I, I just like to point out one who add, who increases the taxes of everybody in your in your county I, I to agree. work on private property. I agree with you. Okay, so I, I just, just don't want to leave it one sided. And, and, and that's Jason. that's the point I want to make. Uh, the the county's already committed to the two hundred and ten thousand dollars plus of fill to bring the roads up to to par, so we can get them so they'll grade and and hold the grade. Um, but we have financial constraints too. The only way we get money is the same way Rodney gets it, charging the taxpayers. So I, I just want to make sure everyone knows that we have the county has financial constraints also. We've already committed to two hundred and ten thousand uh, dollars for this that was done in June, we're ready to go. We just can't get, get some, some help that we need. So I, I, I fear that, that a lot of the, the thought out there is the county's not doing anything. We've, we've been trying to get this done as, as soon as we can. Um, there, there are just some, some issues that we're running into and, and, and I don't wanna make everybody aware that, that we have to tax people too in order to get our money. Well, let's, let's get the will of the wits out of the way and you're, we've encumbered over two hundred thousand dollars in material, hard material for the grading of the roadways. Yes. We have the guy. We have the teams on route. The EMOC, Public Works is ready to go. We have the trucks. We don't have to go out and get any more vehicles. There's no other cost factors involved. Uh, Councilor, what, what what's the um, what's the liability issue that we're confronting that uh, we might be flooding some land? I mean, how intense is it? Well, we've got, we've got two separate issues there in terms of the liability. First up, as I see it, um, is the flooding issue. So you've got sort of a takings claim. So to the extent a property owner feels that we are flooding their property uh, and taking it for, for the public use, we would have to you know, deal with sort of an inverse condemnation case, potential eminent domain case or the like as part of a flooding case. Additionally, one of the other issues that we've heard from other people out there is that there may be potential accidents or crashes or something related to the fact that the road isn't you know, up to par. Or they, and part of that issue, they'll, a, a, a plaintiff's gonna sue us, they're gonna sue Rodney, they're gonna sue anybody they can think of. And in that regards, I'm a little bit concerned about with the, the way that the original agreement is drafted and that it doesn't really address that issue. So we're gonna have to be you know, putting the cost and trying to defend ourselves in those types of lawsuits. Those are the two different liability issues that, that I'm just thinking of right now in, in terms of the roadway issue. So in the long haul, we have to, in the short haul, we have to get the roads graded so we don't have to be concerned that somebody can't get the proper medical attention, mail service, or even just a way of life to get down the roadways. In the long haul, we have to worry about where we're gonna get the additional materials and how much the liability is gonna cost us when we take other people's property uh, by no fault other than uh, the natural occurrence of rain or flooding. So it sounds like that we need the the water control and drainage district out of the way so that we can go forward because we have the incumbent funds to do the roadway, get the road done, and then we, we will be facing, so we may be facing some legal concerns that we will have to address. Could we throw a, a number at that as far as what we might have to do to protect people's property and the process while well, maybe something else is happening in Tallahassee? As far as your uh, well, extension after the 99 years? Well, the only thing I would say in comment to that is we've been doing this on other roads for 30 years and save for the one issue on 99th Street with a, that just happened because that property just changed hands last year and it's really more of a neighborhood dispute than it is an issue of the roads if you know all the players. With the ponds and everything. Yes. It's not even an active fish farm. So they don't have any fish there. The only fish there are, are frogs or whatnot. But that's the only issue that's ever arisen in the past 30 years. Do you know of any other ones? Uh, from a flooding argument, I think that's the one I've heard of, but I've also heard of one from a, uh, there was a crash out there, I believe, Jason. I don't have the yeah. facts in front of me, but there was a crash out there and we had a risk management case uh, dealing with that issue and we were one of the named parties. parties. Yeah. So the school, so the school bus and a vehicle, the, that's district, a the district was sued, the school district was sued and we were sued on that one. Yeah. That's correct. There are a couple of other property owners, landowners that uh, are taking upon themselves to ensure that 
they have a roadway and do, uh, they drag something across the road to make it flat again. I don't want to say it's grading, but it's their improvised methodology. It's a smaller component, a smaller blade, and uh, they're, they're getting it done, and they're fighting it because they're getting water on their property, and they're getting flooded out. So I can only see that that would be amplified if we did it to any less level of satisfaction and we did not add the proper amount of material on it. And if we did add the proper amount of material on it, we will begin to flood the lower property. It will only increase when we add, <coughs> when we add more material. Not being an engineer, Rich, does it sound about right? We add a few inches, we're gonna be sheeting the water right onto their property. We'll have clean, cleaner, clearer, flatter roads, dirt roads, but we still will have sheeting water on their property? That is correct. No matter what we do out there, we add material, we're still gonna have to drain the roads toward the low end of the berm. Um, and what's gonna happen is, is as Commissioner O'Brien was saying, we could build the berms, but we're not gonna be able to hold the water all the time. So we'll punch through the berms and flood the lower properties. And as Rodney has stated over the years for either we have graded away from the ditches. So guess what? I have to grade all the roadways out there toward the private property owners. So we will end up sheet flowing any rain onto those properties if we build up the roads. Some of the roads are lower right now than the property owners. So some of the road, the water stays in the private road uh, rather than get onto their property. Um, 85th, 87th, I've seen it. When we build them up so that we can grade them, that water is going to go directly into these people's properties and into their ponds. There's nothing I can do about it. It's just whatever the board decides, these are the issues that we'll have to address in the future. Sounds like back to the hip, I and mean, I think we should move forward and, and, and just get going and grade the roads. We have the incumbent funds for the material, grade the roads, and then we might perhaps want to deal with Tallahassee as far as the longevity of the uh, water control drainage district. And then we will have roadways for the people and they will be properly graded and we might have more assumed liability, but uh, by, by and far, there'll be no, none of that threatening that we're gonna force to raise taxes and, and, and produce all of this stuff. It will be costly and it can be done over a period of time, but I think we need to do is we need to get these roads graded now. Mr. Chairman, question for you. Yes, and sir, if you wanna speak, in, you, you, is there any chance of you coming to the microphone so we can have your name and address for the record and you get properly recorded for as input? I was up before John Pulver, 93rd Street. This is sort of stupid, but I, I have a summer home up north in Wisconsin middle of nowhere, but there are little country roads all over every place. They're all black topped. And I talked to the county commissioner up there one time. I said, why do you black top all these roads? There, no one uses them. It's easier to maintain, less costly to maintain, to have them black topped rather than dirt. I don't know if that applies down here or not. It's a different subsoil and everything else. But I was amazed at the comment. And these little uh, roads that went all over every place, hardly ever used, easier to maintain when they're blacked up, less costly. If you were at the Felsmere meeting when the word pavement was mentioned, uh, you, you, you would have recalled the response. Oh, okay. It was overwhelming. That's not what people want. Okay. And that's not what people okay, need. I don't know. And, and uh, most that live there, live there, chose to live on the dirt road, and they like the dirt oh, road. Yeah. They just want it even, accessible, and drivable I would agree. for vehicular traffic. I agree. They did not want to have the, the the roadway improved, even with millings. That was that was lightly discussed, and that came with overwhelming uh, dissent. I don't mind the dirt road. I, I, I live in a dirt road, I like it. But I just know that's the solution that was up north. Thank you. Thank you, sir, I appreciate that. Uh, the, yes, Councilor. To the chair, and, and it was one of the issues that I, I emailed Mr. O'Hare about the other day was I was trying to come up with a compromise position that would address the issue that Mr. Mr. Tellman was raising today, which was sort of this secondary drainage issue. And I guess one thing I'm struggling with, and maybe Mr. Tellman can kind of give me a little bit of 
um, guidance on this is I envisioned if we had, if the county was grading the road, you know, so we bring in the initial fill, we take care of the potholes, we fill it to a level that we can grade. If these are rights of way within the drainage district area and their rights of way, if we tilted the water not toward the adjacent land property owners, but toward the canals, and these are, so the water that is literally falling within the Felsmer Water Control District's right of way is then running off into the Felsmere Water Control District canals and not toward the adjacent property owners, could that not be a potential solution? I also thought it was good that then we wouldn't have a situation where an adjacent property owner was trying to piggyback off of our drainage ability, and thus if they've got drainage problems from their private property itself, they would be required to put in the proper drainage to clear out that property. But if it's merely just right of way within their right, within their control, their authority, why couldn't we just have the water flow, flow, flow from there into the canal? And, and I, don't, I, I believe the district still had a problem with that, but I thought that was a, a potential solution to the problem. Well, I don't want, to, I want us to leave today with any false sense, and I don't want anybody that's taken the time to be here from Felsmere to have any false sense that we're going to get a job done and not get a job done. So I think we need to go, go in the direction of getting this graded, and that, that sounds like a, uh, a good recommendation and not worry about the, the outfall. The challenge is that I'm sure the Water Management and Drainage District is going to uh, come back with that we're silting the canal, and now we have to address that issue because the canal now will be overtaken or overburdened by outfall. But, uh, you know, we have to leave here today with, with something going. Uh, that's my, my commitment. Well, but then my question is, if water falls on that today and we aren't there to take care of it, whose responsibility is it to deal with the water that falls on the Felsmer Water Control District right away? Is it the adjacent landowner or is it actually the responsibility of the district? As it falls on the land today, it's the adjacent to our sublateral system, it's the adjacent landowner's problem. Okay. Same. Uh, it, to answer your question, though, Don, it'd be on, it, it, it's if you slope in ritual, he's an engineer, he tell you this, if you slope the roads towards the ditch, the roads are going in the ditch. The first two or three inch rain, you'll have, like you saw on 109th Street, be you'll have that the whole distance. Right now, the county does a fantastic job. It's pitched like this. Sometimes the greater operator cuts a little low on the away side and it makes it, it it makes it creates a small gap, but that's something that you can't get away from when you got that kind of equipment. Um, I have here a map that's up on. Can you see it? That you're. I'm going to move my finger around an area. This is the only area. When I move my finger, there's dots here. As I come down and cross and down and over and back up and then there's the buffer preserve right there. That's the only property taking out the little city of Felsmere in the middle who does their own roads. That's the only property left in the county in the Felsmere Water Control District. Everything on the outside of those dotted lines is, has been annexed, annexed into the city. I'm sorry for walking away from the microphone. Um, that's all city property. The, Everything like this in here and over to Mesa Park is city, or, you know, it's been annexed into the city of Felsmere. City does its own maintenance. Um, I'm not involved with that. They drain their roads through swale pipes, the way we're describing it to you, or into swales. Um, so I'm not trying to be hard to get along with. I want to do the same thing you guys want to do sure. for these people. I don't know the answer to, to the question. I think the board intent is to try to get this moving forward and then not kick the can down the road, but buy some time until we can all work together and solve the problem. I, uh, I, I think we've bought plenty of time. I mean, the people have spent the... Yeah, I agree. I, that's why I'm here today. Okay, so we're going to get something done today. <clears throat> so, um, 
to, to that end, I think that what I have gathered from the residents out in Felsmere is they're not looking for a huge level of service. They're not really well. concerned about the drainage. Um, they just want to be able to drive down their road and get their mail. And if, God forbid, an ambulance needs to come down, that can happen. So I'd like to um, go ahead and make the motion that we take the money that we have already agreed, the $210,000 and some change, whatever that was, Jason. Um, what's the exact number? 210925 That money, put some dirt on the road and grade it. Second. And are you talking about grading this so the water drains onto adjacent property? Grade it the same way we grade the other roads, yes. Well, that's different. No, it's the same. Well, but we saw there on 109th, there's a berm on both sides of the road, so the some water does Some of the roads that we grade out there have berms, and some of the roads that we grade out there do not have berms. It depends on the road, and it depends on how the grader operator has had to go down those over the years. Okay, we're talking about starting to grade new roads now. So I just want to clarify, are we going to grade them with berms on both sides so the water does not drain off on the private property? Or are we going to grade them so the water does drain off on private property? Unfortunately, it's going to be both. Mm -hmm. I, I can't build up the roadways without expending more material to keep it in there. Some of them we will. Some of them you'll have like 109th. Nothing I can do about it. I can't drain the, the road. The property on both sides of the road is higher than the road. That, that's just the way it is. Um, some of the roads I can grade, add material, and it will drain directly on the private property uh, to build them up, to put the berms like we're talking about. Uh, I can cut some of them down. We've got some work to do uh, before we even put material out there. Some of them are slanted the wrong way. Some of them are slanted into holes. We've got some work ahead of us, uh, but it'll be a combination of both. I just, I think it's going to open up a big can of worms for folks that are out there that have not had the water coming onto their property. We grade it, and then we're going to be getting the complaints that, hey, my property never flooded until the county started grading this road. And without some type of proper drainage plan, I, I just think that's going to become a huge nightmare for us. Most of those properties out there have pipes that go under the road into the ditch already. The water that would drain off of the road would go into those pipes and under the road, just like they are done across Willow Street or the roads on Park Lateral that we already maintain. That's, that's how the water gets off out of the secondary drainage system into the main ditch, ditches, you're and that's how it would work. You're talking about the Biona eight-inch <coughs> PVC tubing and not true conduit or something larger, substantial that Correct. the water drainage and the water control and drainage drainage district suggested. Correct. Right. It's mm -hmm. the smaller diameter. Mm -hmm. Okay. And. Rodney, you you intimated that you, you said that Felsmere, the city city is doing their own drainage. They drain into our system. We have five of our subdollars that pass through the city of Felsmere. They drain. They grade their own roads. They have their own city swells. The the city's right. The mayor's still here. Maybe he'll come up and address this better than I could. As far as Rich's problem, if, if, if 109th goes into the hole again, I have a rubber tire backhoe. Anytime that the county has ever called and told me any problem, I go there and dip it out. Sure. And then their grader comes and smooths it out. I'm, that's not going away. You know, if, if Rich has a problem, he says, Rodney, 109th went into the ditch last night. Then we're going to go and dip it out. I mean, we don't have a way to haul something there, but we're going to dip what went in back out to and keep our business open. So what size is that pipe that 
fills me uses is that the eight inch pipe we recommend on to the property owners most of those tracks are five ten and twenty acres we on on some of the five acres we will allow an eight inch but on those on the ten and twenty acre ones we go twelve inch under the roads there but, but what was the city of philly was required to in in the the average track that you pointed out in in the diagram i think the city's street culverts and, and i may be wrong are 12 inches or bigger and where they're going under their roads into our system they're from 12 to 18 inches the thing that the city has going that we don't have everywhere else in the district is that they're slowly paving the roads through block grants so we're, we're getting away from this, the problems that we're discussing here today in the city slowly in the older 1911 part of the city so the eight inch pipes that the landowners had had placed in there is not truly satisfactory to the water and drainage we did not dictate that to them because this holding water back themselves on their own property if they would like to hold it back that's even better for us lagoon wise um, the longer it takes it to shed off their property, the better we are. We do, on the bigger tracks, to keep the flooding issue down from the phone calls, we do make them go 12 inches in the 20-acre tracks. And it, that's kind of what the county was required to do uh, if to do this project, correct? Yeah, and you have a, a couple of roads out there that are paved. Willow Street South and Babcock Street North that has its own swell system. You have your own conduits, you have your own pipes into our system. Almost all of those are 12 inch. Along Willow Street, you actually have the storm basins with um, metal grates and things. When the water reaches a certain elevation, then it comes to us. The rest of it perks back into the ground. Um, on 134th Court, which is a a strange road because it's owned entirely by the property owners the county went in some years ago and put a swale on both sides and where you come in out of that system you have swale those pipes you have pipes that come into our system the rich can probably correct me on this but that's the only other that's the only places i know where you have pipes yourselves everything else is by owner is by owner now you do have pipes underneath county road 512 from sublateral 34 all the way around through town there's an underground concrete that was put in by the uh, i'm running out of voice it was put in by the state of florida that you guys inherited um the ones along babcock street are owned by the county and the ones under 134th court are owned by the county and that's the only ones i know i'm aware of that you guys physically own at this date and those are historic they go way back way back before me and I've been there 31 years. Thank you. Mr. May, did you wanna speak regarding this? Thank you, Chairman. Uh, Joel Tyson, uh, I'm the mayor of Fells Mayor. The city of Felsmere actually, as we say out Felsmere, don't have a dog in this fight. What we, we're happy with, with our drainage and so forth. We have had problems in the past on Broadway. Uh, uh, when we have an extremely hard rain, then it has a tendency to back up. But since they shut down Berry Groves, which was out south of town, and there all of their grove drainage went right straight into park lateral and that would block our drainage in the city since that operation is shut down we don't have that problem anymore it seems to me like that when we have a hard rain it's it's out of there probably in a, in a matter of hours <coughs> the problem here is uh, the people who Bought that property out there, the con property out of on, most of it is there on on uh, South Willow, and then the Circle Z property out west of town. Uh, they 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 were frustrated. They didn't have any way, and we we took it on ourselves through the property owners uh, association out there to champion this for them, and that's how we got all this started. So. 
I just want to tell you, I, I really, I was, I was pleasantly surprised at how you all took this on. Uh, the city is, has stepped up and, uh, or I'm sorry, the county has stepped up to the plate and agreed to do what was necessary out there. You accepted your responsibility because the mistake was made, I think, way back when uh, the uh, permitting was issued, the COs and so forth, for those people that bought out there. With no concern, I, nobody thought about the road issue until all the houses started to be built mm -hmm. and the traffic picked up out there. So I appreciate what you all have done to accept your responsibility and letting that happen in the first place. And when, when we had our first meeting out there, I was, I was really uh, elated that you all had agreed to come out and budget the money. We, we knew that that was going to take time. Uh, to get the money in the budget and to to start doing something, so uh, you all done your part of it, and I didn't expect the the uh, delay from from the water management district. So once we get over that hurdle, but I, I have to agree with what Commissioner Adams says. What we would like is to get the roads graded. They're grading roads out there on the older section, the people on, on the east side of Willow Street. And I can't see why it wouldn't work the same way on the west side. So if you all do what, what Rich says, is just to put some, uh, go in there and prepare the roads properly so that they'll, they'll hold up better, uh, and then grade the roads. That's what the people want. Fill in the, fill in the, washouts and grade the roads. I think that any, uh, any flooding, flooding's a way of life in Felsmere, it always has been. And I think that the people would accept that if there's, if, if your road is slanted to where there's gonna be an accumulation of water on somebody's property, we live with that and, and we, can, we can accept it. Uh, I think, to go back to what Rodney said and you were all talking about before, when we pay taxes, we like to get something for our money. And I think if it's explained to the property owners out there that your taxes are going to go up because we're going to have to do some things out there that haven't been done before, if people are not stupid. I think they can accept that if it's explained to them properly. If that's the route that we have to go, uh, I think they would accept it. Uh, if you if you put it on the uh, on the trim notices that your taxes are gonna go up a little bit because this is what we're gonna to have to do out there to accommodate you and get decent roads. So uh, with that in mind, uh, if you all can come to some sort of an agreement and go out and prepare the roads properly, because what's happening out there right now <coughs> is the property owners, in order to maintain the roads so that they can have access to their property, they're doing temporary things out there. Well, those temporary things, is, bringing in all kinds of field dirt to fill up the holes when we have a hard rain. That field dirt goes right into the ditches, into the drainage district's canals. And that doesn't prove anything. You know, it's just, it's, again, you're building up silt. So by go doing it properly and, and getting uh, the roads properly prepared so that they'll hold up, then I think that that would probably eliminate that problem. So again, I, I Thank you all for the interest that you've taken, for the time that this has taken, and the effort that's gone into it. I just wish that we could get, uh, excuse me, Dylan, get the lawyers out of this thing and, uh, and make some intelligent decisions and take care of the needs of the people out there. Because this is not the end of it, because there's a lot of property out there for sale. And I think when, when the economy turns around, you're gonna have more people coming in here with the same problems that we're having now. So if we head it off now and, uh, and do what's right by the people that are there, it's going to save you some grief in the future. So again, I thank you for, for the time that you put forth, in, and I'm, I thank you for the attitude that you've taken to it. Felsmere, you know, we've been the redheaded stepchild for years, and nobody's really paid much attention to us. So I, I personally appreciate that, that you've, uh, you accepted it as a, as a real concern and you're trying to do the right thing for it.
So with that, thank you. Well, Mayor Tyson, thank you for your input. Um, I, I just want to say that what concerns me is that when you state that people are doing what they can to get by and to, to make some, some sort of normal roadway, uh, people have called the office to find out where they can buy coquina. They want to make their own road. And that, that hits hard while we're trying to decide on who's going to do the drainage and how much fun we're going to get. That's why I said we're not, I didn't want to leave here today without knowing that we're going to grade the road. And it sounds like we're going in that direction because we have a motion in a second on the floor. Uh, Commissioner Adams, you want to restate your motion? My motion was to take the two hundred and ten dollars nine, whatever the number was. Two hundred ten thousand. Two hundred ten thousand. Yeah, two hundred ten thousand dollars. Thank you, Joel. Um, go ahead and acquire the fill, put it on the roads, and start grading them. Second. Is there any further discussion on that motion? Is is that under the new agreement or or the or the old agreement? Oh, that's seventy five, seventy nine. Well, I. I don't know if there's going to be another motion today uh, regarding that, but um, does it have to be part of an agreement? Well, it's their I mean, right of way, we and we don't an have it becomes an issue. I, th I think we're better off with the new agreement. We're not completely happy with that, but I think the new agreement would be preferable. Okay, and then we can get that done. Yeah, I mean, we we the the old agreement has a list of roads that we can go a rights of way. I would like to say the Felsmer Water Control District's rights of way that we can go on and maintain. That list doesn't include the additional nine. I think that's where we were going with trying to put the agreement together. So if it is the wish of the, count, the, the commission to Direct continue state. down the path of the amended agreement, I'll be happy to continue and make sure those wishes are followed. And, and, and if, if, if this motion succeeds, staff will move forward. I just want to make, make sure everybody knows it'll take us a couple months to get the roads built up and everything we are. We will get out there as quickly as we can, but just want to make sure everybody, we won't be grading tomorrow if, 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 if we do this, but we'll, we will be taking actions tomorrow to get to where we're, we're ready to do that, but it'll just take a couple months to get uh, everything ready. I understand that, but we, we do have the funding and the materials and we have the, the qualified expertise and we have the vehicles to get this accomplished. We've got the money ready to go um, and we've got the folks that can, that can do the work. So we'll, we'll start moving forward on it. And uh, cause I, I understand that, you know, it may take some time to, to get through it and get this accomplished, but I don't want any of the good folks going home uh, believing the, the same belief that they had when they left the Felsmere meeting, because that was quite some time ago. So, is there any other further discussion? Motion is clear. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Nay. Nay. Motion passes three to two with Commissioner O'Brien and Solari dissenting. Mr. Chairman, I do have a follow-up question relating to the district out there that you alluded to a little bit in your earlier talk, that if the Felsmere Water Control District, if that's the right name, is not managing and properly doing their job and their responsibility, as it come a time that their 99 years runs out, because there is a bill, there's not a bill filed yet, but if they don't have some very positive, encouraging comments at their March 7th meeting, I believe it's March 7th or March 9th? March 9th. March 9th, that are being supportive or non-supportive of their efforts to go forward as an entity, I think would be discussed at our, our March 14th meeting if they're not gonna do what they need to be doing as their district responsibilities. Would that be timely, Councillor? Actually, you know, if, it if, it's the, if it's the desire of this board to move forward with the grading and essentially take on the drainage responsibilities out there. Um, I don't think we, we, we wanted to put the dirt down in grade. We're not taking the drainage responsibilities, correct? In the prior motion that was made. Okay, then Jason, Rich, have you heard that loud and clear? The drainage issues or the districts are not our problem? And that they need to somehow recognize their <laughs> responsibility at their meeting they have coming up on March 9th. If they don't provide some clear direction of how they're going to address those, I'm not real supportive of them 
getting reauthorized again or being supportive of that, but I'm only one person. Well, but they need to do the drainage part. We're going to do our part. They need to do their part. But if they, at their meeting, don't come up with any resolution of how they might address their part, um, then I'm not supportive. But th that would have to be a motion and a vote if that was to take an official position. Right. And uh, I believe early on you might recall that I would probably be the second, the mm -hmm. fastest second in the room, but right. being a chairman, I cannot make that right. motion. But that's the level of frustration that has enveloped over getting this job done has got to that point. Right, I agree. Where, uh, and, and I want to couple that with, I believe Mr. Tillman stated that the last go around for the update was rather dicey. Uh, I, don't, I don't know what the, the word he used, it, it was a bit challenged. So um, this might be another one of those encumbering events that cause reason for alarm discussion mm -hmm. or the approval uh, process to be altered based on the fact we have an organization that was developed when horse and wagon and, yes, sugar cane was formed out west of town. So what I like is if the county attorney could somehow monitor the what takes place at their March 9th meeting and give us a report back. I might put a placeholder on for the 14th to discuss what took place at their meeting and, and have Dylan report back to us what actions they took and if they're in the positive direction, that's good. Of uh, being responsible and taking care of their, what they're responsible for under their, I don't know if it's a, a charter or what they were originally put under, but I think we need to have a discussion on the 14th of what they agree. they understand the seriousness of the of the problem and that they're going to do some great positive steps for their part we're going to do our part but they need to do what, their part. what do you envision as their part what is it that you want to see them do with that well meeting? if we grade the roads and we're flooding neighbors because we're taking the water from the roads and it's ending up on private property owners that's their water it conveyed over a road we graded but it's their water that would be causing the problem. But Jason and Rich just said it's going to take a couple of months to build up the roads to the point where there would even be that, so that I nothing's agree. going to happen no, by that the would, time. It would be just sort of their tone, their discussion on the matter that they would be open to addressing yeah, that if it occurs. But they would have an annual meeting, and the, the, Mr. Tillman's going back with a number of things and concerns that we have. And so at that meeting, they'd, un they'd understand that they have the long run responsibility for the drainage, that this drainage is going to cost them some money, that going forward, they're going to have to bring the idea of a tax increase before mm -hmm. the people in the district and start doing those things necessary for the drainage. I think those are the type of things that Commissioner Zork would be looking for, and I would certainly be looking for the same type of thing. And that's fine. I just, right. he wanted, he just said he wanted um, Dylan to report on the tone. I just don't, I think that's very interpretive. Well, uh, if true. there's something specific yeah. you want, then we need to say that. Well, it, here's the problem I've got with that, and is, as I see it, this yeah. board has essentially authorized us to accept the third amended and restated agreement with the Indian River or with the Felsmer Water Control District in the form that Michael O'Hare has drafted and presented to us. I don't see a reason why the district's going to say anything different than what they've presented to us for approval today. My concern is that we're not going to realize the drainage problem until, later. until yeah, much later right. down the road. Now, I am fine if it's the board making a policy decision that this is important to move forward on, but I don't see anything I'm going to learn on March 9th that's going to well, tell if they me say what to do. It's the water's on private property. We're not responsible. It's not our problem. That would mean to be non-responsive to the residents. But, quite, quite but frankly, they don't have to say anything about that. No. Quite frankly, if they don't put themselves on the path to either become an improvement district or recognize the drainage problems, the $200,000 of dirt we put down will be got washed away by summertime. Right. And we'll be exactly right by back here. So I think what Commissioner Zork is wanting to hear is that they've put themselves on a path at this March 7th meeting of addressing those concerns in a long, in a long-term view. And I think that's reasonably clear. Mm -hmm. If they've just sto stone stonewall behind Michael O'Hare's conversation in legalese again, then I think it's perfectly clear that they're not on that path. 
and perhaps the next time another request for another $200,000 of fill comes before us, we'll have three votes to say no. And, and this is gonna be a five year, three year agreement with two one year extensions. Oh, don't look at me, I voted no. <laughs> yeah. But it's you need to get the other roads added because six of those roads or nine of those roads aren't covered into the right. 75 and so what I heard from the board today was we're going to have this agreement essentially as presented by Michael O'Hare is the one we're going with. I do have one clarification question because there's a whereas clauses that Michael had deleted that I thought was important to have. I, I can go to that Felsen Water Control District and say to the board, are you willing to live up to the obligations of providing the drainage help, they may not answer me, they may say sure, but we're not gonna know the truth of that. Mm. So Go again, ahead. it's uh, is the March 14th meeting the, the That's meeting. our meeting after the, the Yeah, so no, it's a March 9th I, meeting. No, is, our March 14th yeah. meeting. Right. Is that timely enough? Will that address the issue if it arises on March 9th? As far as I understand, uh, the representative has been asked to file a local bill concerning the extension of the water control district. It has not been filed yet. Um, and certainly if we're sensing you know, non-compliance, I could report back to the board and then the board can address the issue as part of its legislative priorities. I'm just not sure I'm gonna learn much on March 9th. Right, it, and we may learn something, we may learn nothing. Won't know till they meet <laughs> but I think they know that we'd like to hear something positive. But if you if you, if you do this, board will be happy to meet at uh, any time in order to make that decision, so we can move forward. Yes. And, Mr. And, and, oh. Yes. Sorry. Um, thank you. Um, just for going forward, uh, just just a thought. Um, I think Joel had said before that when the property was platted and started to put houses on there, nobody thought about the roads. I think maybe going forward, if somebody's going to build a house on one of these 10 acre parcels, may, we might want to consider getting some kind of easement across mm -hmm. to make sure that we've got some, some access going forward on what develops from Absolutely. Go, going forward so we can bring That's you something good. back on that later. Good point. Commissioner O'Brien. If I could ask Rodney one more question. Rodney, if you wouldn't mind, please. How are the... Um, District directors elected? They're uh, elected one every year on a three year, there's three of them. Um, if they were to go into a community development mode, there would probably be five. Some of those would be developed or elected by a proper, you know, uh, normal vote. And then probably two on an acreage basis. All 298s are per acre. And then, so, is a ballot mailed to every property owner and then the ballots are tabulated or is it just kind of whoever shows up at the annual meeting and a couple good old boys say well i'll be director and okay here's a proxy and you're it the that's a one way of term on it, putting it as a term they the property owners uh, the majority of the property owners in the district by land have the right to conduct a, a meeting Sometimes one landowner alone can do that. Sometimes more than one. Wow. Um, it depends on. You own a lot. You know. Um, but again, is a is a ballot mail to every person that's paying tax no, to your district? No, Does everybody no. get a ballot to vote? No, no. Okay. So when they keep talking about how this got shot down last time they tried to come in, be an improvement district. And some of the things that they asked for is the ability to put in a sanitary sewer collection, treatment systems, potable water, parks, facilities, educational uses, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. They want to become like a city with no transparency in the voting. And they build a, a giant bureaucracy where there, there is no representation, there is no proper vote. And that's why the governor shot it down, Rodney. No. Okay? Yeah. No, so, that's not yes, true. it is, because the, the that's governor. Not true, Mr. O'Brien. Okay, well, I just think if you guys go back and say, listen, we want to renew ourselves and maintain our roads and right of ways, you'd have a much better, better chance of passing. But my understanding of the governor is, He's looking for transparency, and this good old boy network of just sitting around and saying, okay, I guess I'll be director this year, 
doesn't fly. So, um, you know, that that's my big problem with these things is there is no transparency. There is no representation and everything else that they say, well, we don't want to apply again. It's just been a smoke screen in my mind. Okay. I have, I've heard your comments. I'll take those to my board. Um, if they become a community development district, they will be just like you commissioners. They will have to run for election. They will be done through the elector here lady. It won't be the one acre one vote anymore. The governor turned them down on a financial issue. This, this thing went all the way through everywhere with no questions asked. It was vetoed by the governor on a financial matter. And that's something you can ask, that's something you can ask him about. Um, if I may address that, I actually pulled up the letter from the Secretary of State, or actually the letter from Governor Scott concerning that. Um, the litany of additional powers that the bill provides the district will lead to multiple local governments competing to provide the same or similar services, which will result in duplicative taxation and increased cost of living for families in Indian River County. Expanding the scope of the authority of the Water Control District is not appropriate means for residents to receive the desired services, and therefore he vetoed it. Um, he also included in things, including items such as varied as community development, transit, <coughs> mosquito control, fire control, and emergency medical services is counter to the express purpose of this special district. I don't think it was a financial issue that the governor vetoed it. At least it's not what he stated in writing. It appears that the excessive request for powers was the issue. Those were the identical powers that were granted to the little St. John's in the marsh and also granted to Sebastian River, we've copied their request per verbatim. Maybe it's time for a change. Can we move on? Yes, to uh, House Bill 17, yeah. Council. If I may get one clarification from the board, um, Mr. O'Hare deleted a whereas clause that said, it is the intent of the parties not to add any additional roadways to greater route number three beyond those described in this agreement and that the agreement will uh, terminate in no more than five years. Uh, do you just want to concede that we'll delete the paragraph or is that something this board wants to see included? How, Mr. Chairman, how else do you get the additional roads added if you? Essentially the way that roads have been added has been through amendments through the years, which is why we're on the third amended. So this would be the fourth? Actually, this adding. would be the fourth, the third. Okay. Yes. And if it's a desire of the board to let it go and let's just get an agreement done, I completely understand and I just want to at least raise that issue. That's my desire. Okay. As well. Well. Okay. Council. Thank you. House Bill 17. Thank you, Rodney. The final item. Yes, sir. Per, per Commissioner O'Brien's request, the county attorney's office. Uh, we'll be giving the board an update today on House Bill 17. Um, this bill would create a significant limitation on local government homeowner powers. I'm just going to read straight out of the bill on some of these sections. This section expressly preempts the regulation of businesses, professions, and occupations to the state and supersedes any local government regulation of businesses, professions, and occupations with the, with, with the exception of the following two items. One, a regulation adopted prior to January 1st, 2017 without general law authority can stay in place, but it has to expire by January 1st, 2020. So we'll have a grandfathering clause, but it only exists for three years. And the second one is the regulation will need to be expressly authorized by general law. So the last sentence of the bill is a local regulation that is not authorized under this section or expressly authorized by general law does not apply and may not be enforced. I think this is a pretty large attack on our home rule authority to regulate businesses, professions, and occupations within Indian River County. I know Miami-Dade County has looked at this issue. They've raised a number of different issues. Uh, in terms of their ability to regulate things. Uh, arguably, we'd no longer be able to, or their, their, 
their experts had reviewed it, arguably no longer be able to regulate adult entertainment, no longer be able to regulate nightclubs. Uh, locally, uh, it would certainly be an attack, uh, most likely on our pill mill ordinance and our fracking ordinance. Um, you know, and, and I mentioned the pill mill ordinance because I, and I wasn't here when the pill mill ordinance was drafted, but I know it was a classic example of where local governments were trying to tackle an issue when the state hadn't solved the problem yet. And this would be a great example, this bill, of, of us no longer having that ability. So House Bill 17 has uh, been referred to two House committees. Uh, the first meeting is actually tomorrow afternoon. It is at 1.15, and that is in the Careers and Competition Subcommittee. And if it passes, it will then move on to the uh, Commerce Committee. Um, there's no companion yet in the Senate, although we anticipate one being filed. Typically, bills don't move forward in one House without the other one anticipating a bill filed. Uh, Indian River County does not need to do anything affirmative uh, by a vote today. Uh, we already have it in our priorities that we support and maintain the integrity of county home rule authority, both administrative and fiscal. Um, but you know, if the, if the board wants to do a resolution or some sort of affirmative vote specifically on this, we'll be happy to take that to Tallahassee. County Attorney's Office just uh, wants to, uh, wanted to advise the board on this item, and, um, and we definitely th consider this as a threat to our home rule authority. Thank you, Council. Any questions? Uh, just, you all might have seen the FAC sent out a, uh, an alert on this and listed a link to the committee members that will be hearing this tomorrow and might help if we all give them a call or an email or something. Or this could be an item for our constitutional review member to to correct. I <laughs> don't load them up yet. Give them a chance to get, you know, acclimated to the position. I mean, anything further? Yes, sir. Thank you all. Meeting adjourned.